Welcome to Friday Evening, where it's FanCast, Episode 8, where we discuss all things WCBS and then some. On the line tonight is the man who started all this crazy mess, Kendo Slice. Greetings and salutations to all you fuck houses. We also have the youngest known uh, fan of WCBS, Augs for President. Augs 2020. And joining from his own dimension, Reality Spring. Uh, yeah, I will have the cuck muffin extra value deal with cheese and hold the balls. You want fries with that? Sure, why not? Or onion rings. Oh, I hate onion rings. Fries. All righty. Curly fries it is. He and... hates onion rings because he always piles them on his dick and then eats them off of there afterwards. <laughs> so then now he's got a weird flavor. Thank you for acknowledging my dick is that long to eat off of it. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't tell you what size onion rings you were getting there, pal. <laughs> All right. And joining us tonight, special guest, the last man on the planet who still believes that NASA sends astronauts into orbit, Nick Udom. This isn't my office. All right. So up first is Kendo with a retraction of his big, beautiful chest. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the fan cast in the uh, subset BBC section, big, beautiful chest, perverts. Uh, we made a mistake last week in the committee in deselecting Anna Kendrick for our big, beautiful chest when we meant to say Christina Hendricks. So in all fairness and integrity to the big, beautiful chest category, we could not allow Anna Kendrick to go on further claiming she has a big, beautiful chest when there was much more deserving big, beautiful chests out there. So sorry, Anna, for getting your hopes up. Christina Hendricks, welcome to the club. How, 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 how dare you confuse the two? How dare you? Oh, it's okay. We might have some controversy tonight with our, our new nominee because it would bring PEDs into question. PEDs? Yes. Because this woman that I've selected for tonight may... I'm pretty sure she's got fake ones, so that would those would be PEDs. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Christina does. At least that's the rumor. You shut your whore mouth! <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Don't you dare fucking talk about Christina that way. Uh, Rumor. <clears throat> All right. So on episode 82, we had no Dion, if I remember correctly. Nope. We had no Dustin. But we did have Joel, and the old man was back, although he's younger than I am, but still. <laughs> and uh, so we had a, a really good conversation. Well, they didn't talk much about uh, the... Uh, about wrestling. They did a little bit, though. That was one of the questions, but we'll get to that. So who wants to start about their thoughts on 82? Um, I'd like to start because I'd like to point out that episode 82 has already surpassed 2,000 views, and it's only been live on YouTube for all of about maybe, uh, what? 18 hours. 18 hours at this point? Yep. So it's, uh, it's a that's like one. a new record, I believe, yep. for them, for views in that short, in a 24-hour period, which... If they've already broken the record, every view that it gets for the next four or five hours is just set that bar higher. So congratulations, guys. Yeah, congratulations. Yay! Uh, thank you. We, we try uh, every week. You know I... what? One for Nick. Nick, if it wasn't for you and the guys, we wouldn't be here. That's true. Yep. You're our bread and butter. It's all your fault. <laughs> I would have loved the show if that... Fucking faggot. Replacement Dustin would have just gotten off. I hated him. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had to think of something in, in the last in the last throws of the, you know, try time to record. We had to think of something, so we, we we picked some hobo off the street and put a, put a mic in his fucking mouth and said, just talk about stuff, and that's what happened. I just, I mean, <laughs> if they need to figure out who that guy is, I think we should play a game of who is replacement Dustin. Not right now, but we'll figure it out sometime. Yeah. Fuck Diet about. Dustin. Well, could he and not your father's clearest challenge be the same person? I think they could be. It's possible. You know, because we haven't seen I mean, them together in the same room or the same stream. So, hey. If if I didn't have the same opinion on this guy because he was an asshole running me down, I would be telling reality's cuck and cucks for president to go fuck themselves. But I agree with them. Replacement Dustin is an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking hella shit on me, and I didn't like it. What a tool. Yeah, what a fuck stick. <laughs> But apparently, him being on there got this channel lots of extra views. At least yeah. that's how his that's yeah. how his agent is. Well, <laughs> I'm 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 going to say it's because of the, the the picture on the front on the front there. I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Well, 
replacement Dustin's agent would probably say something different. Well, his agent can go fuck himself. He probably would. <laughs> He's probably just a Jew anyway. Who cares? Oh, damn. <laughs> Jesus damn. Christ. With a big metal toothpick. <laughs> yeah, like fucking Captain Phantasma. Gloria. <laughs> yeah. I hope she's on screen more than two and a half minutes this time, because, you know, last time she basically died. They res- have to resurrect her for the next movie. Well, she's a, she, 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 she a giant dyke, so, you know, of course she has to be resurrected. Somehow she escaped. So, uh... Captain Faps. <laughs> one of the things that they went over was uh, all the, the new images. Now, I know they were posted to the Facebook page. Um, they were. That, you know, are these... Were those, uh... 12 inch they're not real small ones right those were larger action figures those weren't even action figures i thought they, they were, were like real. actual images of costumes and people in those yeah, costumes yeah. Well, I stand yeah. they were, they were you might clothes. need to get those eyeglasses fixed well i do well, I, you may need you may need a thicker set yeah. <laughs> well uh you know it i don't know i i'm so tired at this point i don't even care i know that and we had some discussions even amongst ourselves in our own stream on, on Facebook that, you know, you go around to the toy stores and you find toys from Episode 7 uh, still around, Rogue One stuff. And, um, you know, these things aren't selling. I, I think Jeff reported he found stuff that were on sale two for one. Or, you know, they were half price and then on sale, you know, two for, I think it was a two, buy two, get one free or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, you I guys observing Target. the same thing, or? Yeah, yeah I was definitely. At, I, was, yep. I was at Target yesterday. Like the entire Star Wars aisle was on clearance. Yeah. Episode seven and Rogue One. Like they can't move this junk. Well, and I think it's not only that the movies are back to back. It's like there's like fifteen seven varieties. Fifteen seven. What the hell number is that? 57 varieties of the same action figure, <laughs> right? You've got the small one, the big one, the, me- the medium, the, the small, medium, the large, the extra large, the really tall, the not so tall, the, mm-hmm. you know. Extra runny. <laughs> extra runny. Because <laughs> I do remember the, this in the 70s not being able to buy these things because they didn't make them enough, they didn't have them, you know, didn't know Star Wars was going to be this big uh, thing. Um, you know, Star Wars, the first one was really targeted at your young adult male, you know, your, your 12 to 17 year old. Um, and I was a ele- uh, nine and I was fascinated by the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. and well, I think one of the issues is like what they talked about in the main show is just the quality of these figures in general is so inferior. They have like minimal points of articulation. The face detailing is crap. The paint is Garbage. Horrible. Yep, the accessories are flimsy and. You know. I uh, I saw a uh, Kylo Ren at a toy show, and I was just like digging around. And they had one, and I think it was the Black Series. From what I th- I don't know, but uh, on the back of the arms, they had the screws like exposed from mm-hmm. where you, like you'd have the articulation, and it's just so dumb. And luckily with, like, Kylo Ren, he had, like, kind of a cape, so it kind of covered it up. But with, like, Ray, you know, you still got, you got nothing hiding. You just have the screws on, like, the arms and the back, and it's just super lazy. Yeah. And the fact that they're that cheap and this expensive is why I don't think that they're, not only because of the fact that the movie was bad, but I think that the toys are just awful. Yeah, and they're charging premium prices for these things, too. They're way overpriced. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you remember or not. What were the... I know the quality was obviously different, but do you know what the prices were for the original Star Wars toys when the first movie came out? Dude, that was a long time ago. I couldn't tell you. Uh, oh. I want to say... Like a I know the turn 50. of the century prices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Because I remember saving up a lot of allowance money, and I bought the Land Speeder, you know, Luke Speeder, and it was probably around ten bucks. Now, granted, that's probably forty or fifty dollars in today's money. Yeah, I, like, I actually but, have the uh, the remote controlled, like, um, what is it? Like, it has a little engine on it or whatever. It's Speeder at home. It's weird because um, I bought it and I've never used it. Well, with the what would probably be like forty bucks now, 
is you'd get two, yeah, about two of the new cheaply made either Rogue One or the Force Awakens figures mm. with that with that amount. Mm. Brian, Brian, yeah. how much did you say those t- those were? I want to believe that the. I want to say that the action figures were like a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars at most, and somewhere between ten and fifteen. Now, the speeder was just barely big enough to put two figures in, and then R two on the back. A nineteen seventy seven action figure would cost at a dollar ninety nine would cost eight dollars and four cents in today's money. Okay, Jeez, that's crazy. And today's uh, figures that were about <laughs> that are about that uh, size, like the three point seventy five inch ones, I saw today. They're like twelve bucks, and they're in the cheap boxes. The it almost looks like the paint is non-existent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It just it the accessories always come off. They're you know they're flimsy. They the lightsabers don't stay in their hands. It just it's a mess. When uh sucks. oh sorry. Oh no, you're good. No, I was gonna say when I bought figures, it was probably. Like I was telling him, I prices from the about the 1998 to 2000 ish range. So we're talking reissues of the original trilogy stuff and uh, episode one things. They were at least 686 at the Wally World. So let me put it in here. So it's six. Let's say 699. So a seven dollar figure. It'd be the same as paying 1028 in today's money. Yeah, and I I think that back uh, back then there are better figures. Like I buy the. Think. Some of them were. Some of them were pretty bad. Because I've got a few from the first trilogy that I found. I guess when I was a kid, my parents, my mom, like at a garage sale, bought like a box of toys or whatever. There was a handful of like, they're like that weird looking dude with like it looks like he's got the big old slimy slugs coming off his head that hangs out with uh, Job of the Hut. Big for oh, something. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got I've got one of him. I've got a rebel from Endor because mm-hmm. it's just like a green. I thought it was a dude the whole time. Turned out it was supposed to be a chick. Uh, there's a few others I got. I'd have to dig them out and find them. But I've got a handful of those. And I don't remember if I have any of mine left from when I bought them at the like ninety like episode one type stuff. I think I sold all that stuff. Oh, I have I have an Emperor Emperor Palpatine somewhere. Sadly, a lot of paint in his face, his face is chipped off, but... You should have put it in your mouth. <laughs> no. I think the oldest stuff I have is, like, early 90s, late 80s. Nice. Yeah, I know I've got a, I've got a C-3PO from uh, Empire Strikes Back signed by, uh, signed by the guy. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. It is. is it yeah. still in the box? Uh, yeah, it's on the box. I, I bought the I bought the figure for hundred bucks, and then he was the, he was there at a convention, so I, I spent another twenty to have him sign it. All right. And uh, that that that's my claim. That's my like big ticket item that I have. Also, wait, no. Also, I have an Ernie Hudson Ghostbusters figure. Nice. Signed by him, but it, but it, I can't still resell it because it's got my name on it in the whole like passage. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> but, which yeah. is fine because I love the movie, so it's okay. All right. I stand corrected. They were two forty nine back in the day. Okay, so, so okay. that's Still like eight fifty nine dollars. No. What's I found this website that has how much these things are going for loose as well as in the package, and we did have a Ben uh, Kenobi. We had um, I know we had a, a, a C three PO, Chewy, Darth Vader. Uh, loose, these things are thirty to forty dollars. Nice. A package C three PO is four hundred bucks. <sighs> but a Darth Vader double scoping. Uh, Double telescoping laser, uh, lightsaber. This came out in '78. Loose is two thousand so, dollars. Shit. Uh, we I didn't have that I've... one. We had the third one that they're selling for thirty-five bucks. Loose, but yeah, I don't know whatever became all these figures. But my goodness. Wow. I have. I mean, I've, I've got a. I've got a big lightsaber toy lightsaber collection at home. I have the one that changes from uh, from blue to red for. Um, Brandon Skywalker, I've got Dooku's, I've got Yoda's, I've got um, uh, Darth Maul's, both in and out of packaging. Like I've I've got I've got a, yeah. a good collection going of them. Yeah, this is a this is a Darth Vader action figure, but it had a double telescoping. <laughs> that was something they must have done very briefly to be that rare. Yeah, but, there, was a, there was there's actually uh, what is it? it it's an unpainted. 
stuff with the because uh, they painted because they only made like five of them in the factory. They're like they're mock-ups, right. and uh, the 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 back the backfire is the missile, but uh, that's about it. And it's worth yeah, it's worth about sixteen twenty grand. Oh man. Anyway, so there you go. So I was fifty cents off, or maybe a dollar off, depending on how you want to. Because I remember spending about twenty dollars, including tax, for the speeder and several figures. So uh, that's what I was trying to base all that on, and that was that would have been in '78 at some time when you could actually buy the toys in the store. <laughs> but I do remember the Kenner commercial of, "Hey, folks, we don't have them, but come get your certificate, and we'll send four random ones to you when we get around to yeah. it." Yeah, I remember that. It wasn't. It wasn't like you have to send them like six, bo- like four or five box tops, and you, and then like in six weeks they send you the figures. Well, like that. that was one promotion. There's another promotion where you bought this because I know I didn't buy it then. We bought ours later, but you get this background of all the figures, and then you had a certificate in there that you had to fill out and then mail in. And then between I think it was February 1st and June 1st of '78 when they were actually <sighs> available, or well, I guess it was later that year. I don't know. I can watch this commercial. I can figure it out. But um, they would then mail you four. <laughs> So, but if you, if yeah, and if you have that original backing and all of the action figures represented on it packaged, so that was uh, a sand person, a C3PO, an Imperial Guard, uh, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and blah blah blah. I mean, uh, it's got all the main characters in it, and a Jawa and a Stormtrooper. That's two thousand dollars is the value Ooh. nowadays. Wow. You can still see that old TV spot in the recording of the Star Wars Holiday Special. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we're, yeah, we're all we're all clamoring to watch that. Yeah, I Star did Comics. watch that as a kid. I didn't watch the whole thing, but uh, I have I have that, and I've got it with Rough Tracks. It's oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> a, a friend of mine showed, showed it to me, and he was skipping through portions of it, and it was still too long. Yeah. I watched about five minutes of it, and I was like, "This is still too long," and I hate oh, it. Yeah. Just turn it off. Yeah, all those Art Carney segments and the. Harvey Corman. Oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, that's part of what, you know, in 77, that I don't think any full, anybody fully realized what they had on their hands. They knew they had a movie, and I think it was Spielberg that convinced um, 20th Century Fox to give, him, give Lucas a bit more money to let him finish it, because they were ready to cancel the project on him. And the craze that started was just, we'd never seen anything like it, where it just, for months on end it was in the theaters and lines and you know granted i did my mother wouldn't let my brother and i see it when it came out and then she let us see it after empire in 1980 and even then uh you know with the re-release it was all over the place and then uh when they re-released them i think it was in the 90s when they released yeah. all of them empire was the one that that sold better it was like the number three movie or something for several weeks because <laughs> there's there's Jeez. a there's a, a thing with Mark Hamill yeah. on um, Carson, and they're talking about how you know popular this thing is, uh, even though it's a 20 year old movie, which is was pretty wild. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I did see something with Mark Hamill uh, on Carson where he was talking about uh, fucking with uh, the guy who played R2D2. Oh yeah, Ken, yep, Kenny Baker. Yeah. 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 Well, and there's also a story he tells about. Um, uh, Alec Guinness messing with there was one of the guys that was playing I think it was one of the Jawas. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was it was a story about that. Alec Guinness messing with Kenny Baker. Oh, was it Kenny Baker? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Somebody sent that in the Facebook for the WCBS page, I think. I think I can pull it on there. So it I think the short of it all this is that yeah, there is I think it's not only toy fatigue, it's just there's so much. They make so many varieties of things. It has competition because that's the other thing too is is in 77 that was really uh lightning in a bottle in many ways. You had a movie that really changed movie making. Uh sci-fi up until then, the best sci-fi was probably uh um uh close not close encounters, but um um, 2001. Yeah, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Because <clears throat> most of sci-fi was pretty much just cheesy, Buck Rogers kind of stuff, and there is a little bit of that in Star Wars, but the way they went about inventing how to do all those effects and things, and then the toys coming out, nobody being ready, there wasn't a lot of competition, and now there's a lot of competition, and they make too much of the stuff. 
you know. Well, back then, the Star Wars was about the movies and making, you know, the movies good and having art. Now, and then you just kind of had the toys to go with it just to, you know, oh, okay, now you get to have a Luke Skywalker tour or whatever. Now exactly. it's about the marketing. It's mm-hmm. That's why Captain Phasma is in The Force Awakens. She really doesn't serve any purpose other than just a dumb way to lower the shields for uh, the Death yeah. Star 3. But Death Star 3, yeah. That's well, why C-3PO has a red arm, so they could resell it. That's oh, yeah. why all mm-hmm. these, that's why all this, you know, is like, <clears throat> I mean, it's all for marketing. That's what it's made for. It's not really made for, you know, the art and trying to continue off the legacy of the first three. It just, that's what really pisses me off the most is just that, it's just not even what it's about. Yeah. Well, you start seeing that a little bit in Return of the Jedi. Now, when I was, Box, yeah. you know, kid, I, you know, I saw Jedi. I was fifteen. That was actually my favorite of the three for a while, and until I understood the Empire, you know, the darkness I saw in Empire was supposed to be there, and this, you know, this three story arc, and you know, then I understood a little bit better, and Empire became my favorite. But you had a bunch of characters in, in Jedi that started this thing and now you know you had a, a bunch of characters in the prequels and then you know you have a bar scene that has what 37 different characters that all have a name and have a four page uh, Wikipedia article on them <laughs> and, and an action figure you know and now they just can continue it now it's not only there's not so many characters I mean you do get the bar scene in, in episode 7 but now it's not only that there's so many characters, but it's we're going to have 30 varieties of an action figure and various heights and made of metal and not made of metal and made of this, made of that, and hand-painted and blah, 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 blah. Well, is this your arts, Hasbro, whatever? Just, you know, everybody's making a Force Awakens toy. So, anyway. But I, 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 the, the fatigue is obviously uh, real in the toys. For me, I've got fatigue with the movies – um, you know, we all know what I think of the Force Awakens. I made a video similar to Jeff and Nick, uh, and who was uh, Nick? Who else was on that first? Was that Dion that was on that? It was I know it was you and Jeff because Jeff starts it. I'm I think um, I think it's um, I, th- I think I think it's me, Dion, Jeff, Dan, and Phil as well okay. as on is on. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly how I felt. I mean, you know, and uh, but you know, I've been I didn't make a Rogue One video after I saw that I made two Rogue One videos before I ever saw the, the movie and I was wrong it was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen and it wasn't trying to be funny um, no um, I mean I mean Rogue One I think is a perfect example of how you how you do a prequel and like a you know and things like that because you had the technology that they had the like you know all the stuff all the ships and everything looked of the era you had the uh, the computer boards and everything look of the era and everything was you know looked the way the first Star Wars A New Hope did and that, that's, that's, that's way to modernize Star Wars. Yeah, and you know that's that 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 that's how you do it. You don't do it through fucking part seven, where it's you know just like you know oh we're going to reinvent the the wheel and try to do this again. It's like no, no, fuck you. I will make the fact that Episode Seven exists. It's that they do it so poorly. With Rogue One, it's that that's how you introduce or rehash elements from the old Star Wars movies, but you make a new story and you do something new with it. The Force Awakens, instead of just being similar, it takes every single plot point from A New Hope, a little bit from Empire, maybe a little bit from Jedi, but never once does it actually have the feeling of those first movies, and that's that's what's wrong. Yeah, and I, and I, think, I think Jeff made a, a, an excellent point saying that you know, Fox owns the first, the first Star Wars movies. Or the first movie, at least, mm-hmm. and um, Disney's trying to make the first one again by redoing it and making a new hope again with part seven, but they can't because it's already been made and you know you you know it's like gold's been struck with that movie forever and we all know it and it's iconic and that so Disney's trying to recreate that and trying to do it again with part seven but they couldn't because we all know it's a fucking lie. Yeah, I thought episode eighty two perfectly uh, explained the Star Wars segment, and I also liked how you know the calculations of how much Star Wars would have made today or like, you know, adjusting for inflation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you, that, that's one thing we do. We always try to get the numbers right or at least close to it as much as we are able to. 
I mean, you can't beat the facts. You can't just say, oh, you're just a retard. You're an asshole. Nope. Nope. We, we got the facts. I mean, you had you you had Jeff name off the brands of toys that he knows that are good or bad. Yeah. And he and he, he didn't name them all off because it would have gotten really boring. So, <laughs> I mean, the guy, the, the guy knows his shit. Everybody knows who he's talking about. It's Jeff Hicks. He's the now, most educated. This... No, go, go. I want the I want the stormtrooper, Kendo. Yeah, I was gonna say now that we've talked about Star Wars toys, does Jeff know about these Star Wars toys that I linked to you guys? <laughs> I want to know what force powered means, though. Folks, if you're listening at home, and why wouldn't you be? This is a star studded episode. We have we're looking, <laughs> at, and, and the link the link will be in the description. I want to know how you found these. <laughs> Typed in Star Wars Dude, adult uh, please, toys. No, no, no. Please tell me, are these real? Are these real? I, I hope so, because the first one I'm looking at is the Lord Vader force-powered vibrator. And it says, the tagline is, who's your daddy? And it's Hold a on. Lord Vader force-powered vibrator. Well, let me see this. Let me see this. The force is strong with this one, it says. Come on. Or you can Come have on, a C3PO, Google. C-3PO G-Spot vibrator. Then Come there's on, the R2 D2 personal massager. This probably isn't the droid you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> now the question and is, then is, is the feel the force. Feel the force with Star Wars vibrators. The Stormtrooper couples massager. Open the blast doors. <laughs> Open the blast doors. <laughs> and they're from the Lilo range. No lightsaber. It's so much potential. No, 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 no. There's an Avengers oh, line I found too. it. So, here we go. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, there's I'm looking at the Avengers line. line. Oh, these are Captain funny. America silicone vibrator. And then there's the <laughs> Iron Man twin motor vibrator. The Thor's electrical stimulator. Because why wouldn't it be? Of course. Yeah, but why oh, is that guy's G-Spot? That, that one ought to be, um, uh, what's her name? Hawkeye's accurate, though. Black Widow. <laughs> no, Black Widow's got the little discreet clitoral stimulator. Yeah. Is there a Hulk, is there a Hulk fist for smashing? Oh, there's oh, a Hulk, a Hulk twelve inch silicone dildo. Yeah. Uncirc or it's circumcised as well. It looks like yeah. So that's everything you need to know about Bruce Banner. <laughs> it's long and thick, and it's green. And it's green. Whenever it glows in the dark. His, <laughs> you wouldn't his like pants don't rip off. You wouldn't like him when he's angry, ladies. <laughs> Or maybe, maybe or you would, would if that's what you're into. And I will link these in the description, so I will save these links. I really hope these are real. How, I really, did, you, how did you find these? I, I googled Star Wars adult toys because I got tired of listening to you guys talk about children's toys. Yeah. My mind started to wander. And I want to know like, how well these are selling. These actually cause fatigue. <laughs> better than the Force Awakens. <laughs> when used properly, they do cause fatigue. I don't know if they're actually real. They might just be concept stuff. No, nope. yeah, they, they couldn't be officially licensed. Nick has confirmed that. That's a shame. Well, anyways, folks, look at these and have a chuckle. <laughs> because awesome. I wish these were fucking real. I mean, this is BuzzFeed, which is pretty much butt cancer, but that's funny. I, oh, I know. <laughs> the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I have something that is real. Hold on, if it actually shows yes. up. Come on. Come on. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. Oh, we're waiting for that link to pop up. Now is a good time to talk about t-shirts. Who would like a t-shirt? Everybody would like a t-shirt. Now there's World Class Bullshitters officially licensed t-shirts. And where can somebody get those? Incarnatestudios.com. Don't forget the goddamn hyphen. Yeah, don't forget the fucking hyphen. Those are, in fact... Real stuff that you could buy, folks. Real, real quality merchandise. What hyphen is at the dash, you retards? I, I own a couple. Swimway Star yeah, Wars on. dive assortment. Oh, so you get three for the price of seven fifty, seven four, three. whatever. Oh, yeah. those things you swim around and pick up off the bottom of the thing. I mean, you could probably use those for dildos. I mean, you just have to get out the KY and lube them up real good. Anything. Dildo, if you're brave enough. Exactly. <laughs> or a butt plug, if that's what you're into. Yeah. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I Man, bet you that's, that's what you're, if that's what you're into, dot com, it's probably taken. What you into, dot com, probably. All right. Well, That's hey. a shame. No Star Wars sex toys. No officially licensed. But there are plenty of uh, unofficially... Unofficial uh, parodies. 
Oh, yeah. I've seen a few. All right. So let's yeah, move on yeah. to the photos that got posted to Facebook uh, from Star Wars stuff. Um, I like the comment about, uh, you know, Bilbo Luke. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Who's buying the Star Wars uh, dive assortment? Anybody? Anybody? No. I don't have a okay. pool anymore. <laughs> I I would have nothing to do with them. No, no more of my money is going towards Star Wars. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so these are for five-year-olds and up. So these are things that just go to the bottom, and I guess they are weighted on the bottom, so they kind of semi-float. Yeah, correct. They stay, they stay erect at the bottom. Okay, gotcha. So that's why it... Yeah. Kylo Ren, Captain <laughs> Phasma, and the Stormtrooper. Yay, yippee ki -yay. That's what oh, I want. Fucker. I want I want Darth Emo floating around my pool. It could be worse. You could add that cunt Ray. Uh, no, thank you. Or yeah, boy, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I forget who made the comment. I've noticed the same thing. I've seen him in several other movies. We got Detroit coming out. There was one um, about the. I think it had Robin Williams in it. And I don't see anybody else in anything. You know, uh, the original cast was in several different things. Obviously, Harrison Ford got cast as um, Indiana Jones because Tom Selleck wasn't available. But, uh, you know, uh, Mark Hamill was in things. Carrie Fisher played in a few other movies. Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers. The Burbs. Wow. Wait, hold on. Was, was, that, from, was, that, was that from Augs? Yeah. Yeah. God damn, sir. Good for you. Shit. Yeah. Well, she was in The Man with One Red Shoe, too, but that was years later. That wasn't after the original one. But Oh, I saw that. that was... Hey, she's running around in uh, in leopard-striped underwear, so hey, it can't be too bad. Okay. I thought I saw the guy who played uh, Poe Dameron and something else. No, oh, was... um, Isaac, um, Isaac, Isaac wait, Os yeah. Oscar Isaac or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, he's he's in so much stuff. He's he's an amazing actor. Um, why he's in Star Wars, I have no fucking clue. Yeah, so I just might that. not pay enough attention then. Money. Yeah, I, I mean, if it's fun, no, no, if, if if it's money, it's fine. I get it. You know, that's that's all good. But um, like he he was in what Star Wars? The not Star Wars. Uh, he was in uh, the last X Men movie, which is really fucking horrible. Could have been just something else to put on his resume. I've been in a Star Wars movie. Sure, why not, man? It's, I'm a part it's of the franchise. Right. Yeah. Well, and he was. I think that originally he was supposed to die, and then the uh, diversity squad got a hold of the script and said, "Jar Jar, you got to change this." And so he just appears for reasons. <laughs> for reasons. He really should have died. They. Yeah, they never did explain where he came from or how he came back. He just walked out of the movie for a while, and, like popped back in. Oh yeah, I'm oh, still Mason, here. You did a great job protecting my druid. <laughs> No, you can keep my coat. Yeah, looks good on you. It smells bad, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to grab your shoulder. Oh, um, why, why, why does it smell like basketball and weed? <laughs> <laughs> what they needed to have uh, at that point was for him to go, did we just come best friends? <laughs> I thought they did nope. something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, apparently that. you meet somebody <laughs> and then like you in, you're in a plane crash with them. He steals your shit, and then you find him days later, and suddenly you're the bestest of friends. I don't get that. I would have fucking smacked him in the eye and be like, give me my fucking coat, asshole. I ain't dead. Uh, Not yet. And he was a stormtrooper who obviously, like, you know, killed rebels or resistors, whatever they're going to be. Um, well, 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 apparently he resisted, he resisted their programming as well, and that was the problem. Like, they had to go in for, like, a third, a third reprogramming or something, so... Yeah. Well, he watched his friend die, and then he said, "What? Well, what is this? What am I doing this for?" Whatever. Yeah. Either way, it's yeah, Oscar Isaac's been in been some shit for sure. A stormtrooper. Oh no, my first battle. It's super violent. I'm gonna go quit. <laughs> like, I don't know. None of the rebels question his conversion once at all. Well, they're they like, no. "Hey, you you're, an you're a stormtrooper. That's cool. You can join us now because you said you quit." <laughs> you're brave. Jesus Christ. No, he was Please. really in sanitation. The police force wishes the bad guys would be that gullible. 
<laughs> no, but instead they have to beat the shit out of them. So you know, whatever. Yeah. But I tell you what, when I first saw that, I was like, I cannot believe we have yet another stereotypical black character, and now it's in the Star Wars movie. I mean, really, the janitor, <laughs> space janitor, that's what you got? I mean, come on. It was kind of the... Well, the, well, the spirit... When I walked out of The Force Awakens, there's a African-American family just kind of walking out, and the, the little black kid goes, Mom, why was the black kid so <laughs> uncool? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the part that I'm planet? laughing at. There was, there was a Red what is the movie, Red Planet with Val Kilmer, and he was a space janitor, and he ended up saving everybody. So, <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did anybody notice how Augs was extremely PC by saying the African-American family, and then in the same sentence referred to him as black? Yeah, I noticed that, too. But he was I, quoting. I, I forgot what show I was on. No, because he, he's like, the African-American family. So I'm like, oh, he's being a nice guy. And all of a sudden, and then the black kid says, <laughs> it's like, Wow. Way to go. <laughs> Shot myself in the foot there. Oh, because you're on the right show to say that. Exactly. Yeah. I kind of forgot what I was, thought I was giving a school presentation at first, and then I was like, oh. Yeah. We don't care. No, I know. No, we, we know. We know school starts in like two days for you, but it's fine. Just, just, just no, give it's, it a uh, minute. August yeah. 15th. Reading, <laughs> writing, arithmetic. <laughs> I'm going to sing the song. Three R's. They don't teach that anymore, Kendo. It's all about feelings. I feel that one plus one equals nine. I'm right. Oh. <laughs> I'm too drunk for that. Yeah. Anyway, so I, anybody other going to make comments on the photos? Or, or, or are we going to just skip on down the road? Did we comment on the actual photos, or did we just kind of like... I don't remember us actually talking about the specific pictures. Well, I started to, and then I veered us off into other directions. But I mean, oh, you know, because... we've got Luke lost in Middle Earth, and we have uh, Ray. <laughs> I don't know how to hold a lightsaber or stand. Or we stand. have these red that look like uh, they came out of the shitty Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland reboot. Yep. yep. <laughs> like it's just more <laughs> I've unoriginal. Yeah, more unoriginal, uncreative Disney shit. I have no interest in the person. Oh, seen, so. look. Troopers hey, in red. That. Never seen that before. Fuck Topher Grace. How did the Kylo Ren survive? It was left in a hallway and it, like, blew up. And he's holding it here. How did what now? There's a mask. Kylo Ren left his mask on that little... Uh, um, for for the same reason, for the same reason, they change the scar from one side of his face to the other. It, they can fucking do whatever they want. And they think we won't notice. They Wolf know Mort fixed it. They know that uh, he's not threatening without his mask. He's not threatening with his mask either. But he's not threatening at all. He's a fucking bitch. No, exactly. Yeah. Kylo Ren looks like the type of kid that you could just walk up to and just beat the shit out of him and take his milk money <laughs> <laughs> every day. I guarantee, like. The young adventures of Kylo Ren would be not very eventful because it'd just be him getting stuffed into lockers, <laughs> and just and then and then and, and then some old man gives him some powers and he's like, I can kill everybody now, and and, and then he becomes Carrie. Well, hey, well, the, no, he's like a school shooter to his little Jedi club. Well, General, <laughs> ah, yeah. damn it, General Ren wow. wasn't even afraid of him. <laughs> Standing right next to Snoke, he's like, Hey, I'm gonna have some Snoke bitch slap you, and he does. Well, no, because. Kylo Ren wasn't even scary then after he got powers because yeah, Boyega fucking went toe to toe with him for a few yeah, seconds, and then fucking Columbine and shit, man. Calm down. Calm yeah, down. well, he's getting all fucking jacked up for school, and he's probably loaded up on that Dr Pepper. <laughs> yep, I'm picking it right now. <laughs> I'm all jacked up on Dr Pepper, man. Give me my assault rifle. School's in session. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! He's part of an original crowd. <laughs> So we're going to go back to the 70s. Well, I tell you what, though, those Nick, those changes like that, it is amazing. I don't know if you guys have ever watched any of the fanboy videos on YouTube where they go to, to great lengths explaining why you know, there's changes and what it means and what we can expect. It is bizarre land, you know, where it takes 27 minutes to discuss a two-minute teaser trailer. It's I can't. I can't. I can't. Of course, when people that. cry. Oh, I can't. <laughs> 
No, you're 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 discussing a, a minute a ninety second fucking teaser trailer. No, go fuck yourself. I know I I know a lot of the blogs I read will will do that like Gizmodo whatever or IO9 or whatever will do like a page and a half of like you know like the breakdown of of the trailer and then a little Everything little beyond the trailer. Oh God. A channel, like twenty minutes for just like every movie trailer ever that's coming out. How can you even talk about that for that know. long without you just having filler it's just all right hey i want to see the movie or oh it, i don't and here's why or whatever it doesn't take 20 minutes well because... yeah and then, and then and then judging the movie on it on a teaser trailer either way is still like that's not a good idea <laughs> no because if the video is longer there's more time to fit in ad breaks true yeah, some it, don't have ad breaks. It's some all don't. about making money now. It's not really having where, yeah. oh, I'm going to show a right opinion. But they're not making much money themselves. even with the ads. It, it's, I, I don't know. But, you know, I've some of the, the pictures of the, of the that were released and people were talking about them. And I'm, but I am seeing more and more video. Granted, I don't watch a whole lot or listen to a whole bunch of these, but the ones that I start to select and see what's, I kind of got on a Star Wars kick today for some reason. But, it's amazing how many times I'm hearing from some of these fanboys that it's basically Empire. It's the beats of Empire. It's, you know, they're already, they, the diehard fans who are going to defend The Force Awakens to the death, are already saying it's Empire. So I'm like, yeah, no kidding. But it's like, even they're starting to slightly red pill themselves. And there was no going around it. Like, if they made. The Force Awakens, the exact same thing as A New Hope. Episode 8 is bound to be like Empire because that's how the story is supposed to continue. Yep. You know, you really can't make anything else new if you're going to... If you're going to... Let's just break Star Wars down into just three acts in one story. Well, you already copied the entire first act. Are you, how are you going to do something different for the second act or the third act? It's just going to... You're bound to have to continue that. Yeah, and and Disney's Disney is so fucking un- unimaginative at this point that they're doing live action versions of their old cartoon movies. Yeah. Hell, I mean, you you know, you heard the controversy over over Aladdin. Yeah. Fucking Aladdin. You know, it's like hey, why are you Robin Williams? Which which to me is a go- which which to me is a goddamn slap in the guy's face. I yeah. love Robin Williams, and when he died, I you know I I I, I teared up a little bit. Um, he was a part of my childhood, you know. I, I love Robert Williams and I love uh, Mrs. Doubtfire so much, um, but it was yeah it's, it's gonna be you know in, it, in a month or no not a month a few months yeah and then Will Smith being the genie why like fucking fire him I hate Will Smith now he's just what like does a, Will Smith do to really say oh yeah I'm the genie so what I had some uh, you, I guess some charm on Fresh Prince of Bel Air he's not God. that's still not what the genie is he's not supposed to just be this quote unquote smooth dude. He's just, you know. He's supposed to be funny. He's supposed to be actually funny. And Will Smith isn't. Will Smith is just going to be Will Smith acting as the genie, like he was Will Smith acting as uh, Deadshot in yeah. Suicide Squad. That's all. That's all. That's all he does now. And I mean, I, I think the reason he got in is because he gave the movie so much money. I'm pretty sure he gave the movie a good chunk of money to be in it. That's why, because With he knows he's going to have a Bad career. Boys, I don't really like Will Smith at all. No, I, no, no. You know, he's Jack. yeah. Yeah, because ever since he's been he's been inducted or indoctrinated into Scientology, he's been a fucking cuck. So, yeah, couldn't agree. Couldn't and agree. we're back to that. <laughs> we're back to what? Well, I must say, I did see a trailer for Bright, and actually, that seems uh, interesting to me. I like the combination of the fantasy realm being real in uh, in things, but that's a Netflix movie. They made a Bad Boys Three. What was the, what was I doing when they did that? Oh no, it's it, it, it was it was it was yeah it was filming here in in Atlanta. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it's done now. They were supposed to do uh, part four, like they were supposed to film part four all at once, and that was a bad idea. But they scrapped it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, like Bad Boys is fine. I love Bad Boys. Bad Boys is fine. Bad I Boys is hilarious. Oh no, no, both 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 of them are a lot of fun. I love them to death. They're they're good fucking movies. Um, you know, I, I bought them both on Blu-ray the other day from Best Buy as a combination. So, I mean, like, I, I fucking love them to death. So I guess With it's the Bad Boys for Life is the third one. Because I'm looking at IMDb for Will Smith, and they have announced a Bad Boys 4, but I don't see a Bad Boys 3, but there's a Bad Boys for Life. 
Because I couldn't remember the name of this movie that I saw on Netflix thing uh, for. Yeah, Bright. Right. Cool. But, uh... <laughs> you okay there, Kendo? Yeah, uh, depth charge number two is not sitting so good. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, Bright kind of reminds me of Alien Nation a lot. Yeah. So, but hey, I'll check that out when it hits Netflix and stuff like that. But we'll see. Anyway, so any anybody anything else Star Wars, whether it was covered or not in eighty in uh, episode eighty two, that anybody wants to talk about? Fuck Star Wars. No, Fuck. but I will add one thing that could save the new movies. Uh, you know that Nudity. function. You know that function that BB eight can. Uh, he how he did that little thumbs up with the lighter. Yeah. yeah. Well, if they had all the characters having a blunt, and they use that lighter, and it's just an hour of them getting high, talking about Han PG Solo. rating. All Han Solo's God here. damn it, Oggs! Your 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 parents. Best. I'm sure your parents are very worried about you these days. Are we gonna do it that '70s show style where the camera's just gonna twirl around? Yeah. You know, the thing is, I don't think that would save the movie. They'll start singing because I got high by Afro Man. Oh my God, that was that, that that's before your time, sir. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, I, I like the idea, Augs, but I don't think that saves the movie because the characters that would be getting high and like having fun, I hate them. No, so. they die. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they all they die, die, and we are overdose, introduced to so all these. On slowly what? Slowly, those they die, and then it just Han Solo comes back because like reasons you know, they're high. And, you know, it's just all in their imagination. And then they just, I don't know. It's just some kind of cocaine dream about them fighting Darth Vader again. I don't know. Uh, yeah. That could work. Until it comes in, it wasn't real. It didn't really happen. <laughs> it ends up being like fucking sane <laughs> elsewhere. Like at the end of the movie, it just shows a young Mark Hamill sitting there staring into a snow globe. <laughs> 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 at the end of Nine... Nine or he just wakes up and says, "I've had a wakes up uh, his his wife." Aunt Peru, yeah, Uncle I've Owen. Had, I've had I've had the most craziest dream. Yeah. You were there, and you were there, and then you oh, were there. Geez. <laughs> but you weren't you, but you were there. You two were there, but then you got burned up and you turned into blackened skeletons. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, that bad. blue that blue milk is kicking my ass. Uh. Yeah, what'd you put in this shit? <laughs> Turns out uh, that Mark Hamill, like Luke Skywalker, just fucking does quaaludes all the time. And that was really the whole message. The new hope was quaaludes. They can make everything better. Uh, <laughs> it's all see, one big head. See, I called it last week. Fear and loathing is Mos Eisley. We got this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I just saved the Star Wars franchise. Last week we saved the DCEU. This week we saved Star Wars. Yeah. Cool. Call us. Ray Thank needs to all. die. That's this. No next, <laughs> next week, the world. Let's start a Kickstarter called Kill Ray. Patreon <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. money. <laughs> yeah. With enough Patreon money, uh, we could get a DeLorean. We'll go back in time and just. Don't say those Kathy things. Kennedy. Don't say no, those no, things. No, no, no. We, we just need a whitehouse.gov petition to kill off all these characters. <laughs> yep. All right. You know what? We got a special edition of Fuck Mary Kill that just popped into my head. So here's the game Fuck okay. Mary. Fuck Mary Kill. Yep. Padme. Mm -hmm. Or so Natalie Portman, Daisy Ridley. That's her name, right? Yes. Yeah. Sadly. Carrie Fisher, present condition. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. One's already dead. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Kevin's already dead. So that's uh, that one thing. Does uh, it, though? <laughs> Yes, it does. Unless, well, unless you're Phil, <laughs> you're into that kind of, you're into that kind of weird. Because <laughs> God knows the man doesn't get any ass normally. He, he'll take whatever he can get, cold or warm. There's no good way out of this. Exactly. That's why I posed the question. I'm not. I'm not here to get any in, in depth thought and discussion. I'm here to torment uh, people. All right. Well, then you go ahead. Fuck, you go first. Fuck Daisy, fuck Daisy Wrigley and Mary um, Natalie Portman. They just killed an already dead Carrie Fisher. <laughs> yeah, because she's already dead. Just leave her alone. Just leave her alone. Yeah, yeah. Right. I agree with thing. Jeff. I mean, Nick. Thanks, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that killed the flow. So yeah, we done with Star Wars yet or not? 
I yes, hope so. Please. I am, please. I think we all agree that it's just it's just headed downhill. All oh, right. Gosh, Speaking of headed sure. downhill, and did anyone else since yesterday decide not to show up to Fandom Fest? Me. And no, since the list was read last night, there was no more cancellations. Yeah, that I that wasn't that's in Louisville, or Lexington. Uh, that's in Louisville, Lexington. Lexington is Scarefest. Okay. Because I know my daughter went. I thought for some reason I thought she went to that one, but I I don't think it was. She went to one in Indianapolis a few years ago. She's really into anime and stuff like that. But there was a small festival over in uh, Covington one year. But, um, yeah, I meant to ask her about that one because she probably knows people that would go to it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, it really sounds like, from the way you describe it, Nick, it's, it's kind of like karma's catching up to these two idiots that have been running it. And uh, hopefully it, they get squeezed a bit. It's happening right now. I'm sure it is. Like, I'm still waiting for pictures to come in for, for today. But I'm, I'm sure I'll get pictures tomorrow. About what's happening there and everything, because even now there's like news outlets are all about it. They're still reporting on it. They're there. I mean, there, there's even the fire marshal saying, you know, if there's more than like you know a thousand or ten thousand people there, like they're gonna shut it down all the way. You think that I many know. people I think that are they wouldn't have to worry about it? Yeah. <clears throat> now, no, because usually, usually the number is like I've already I've always heard from from Ken and Myra is that the number is always like 30,000 sold, 10,000 attendants or something like that. Like it's always a weird figure with them and they, I'm sure they lie. So it's just the way it is. How do you, but how so, do you have one third of the people show up that you sold tickets to? Um, it, it, once again, they don't know how to do math. Uh, I think that's a problem. Um, and yeah, cause they'll, they'll, they'll pre-sell 30,000. They'll do a lot of VIP stuff and they'll, you know, sell like, hey, you know, Little Mermaid, the woman do the voice of Little Mermaid's going to be here. You know, get, you know, give me 150 bucks and we'll get you her signed picture, some bullshit like that. And then she backs out and then you don't get that. And, you know, because their uh, re- refund policy is no refund. So you're fucked either way. But I think there might be a class action lawsuit against them after this. Right. Because I could have sworn I remember my daughter talking about something like this a few a couple of years ago. So I think this is something that's been building where things where people canceled. I mean, here at Comic, Comic Expo, uh, in Cincinnati, we've had things with the advertise, and sometimes people show up or cancel last minute. But it's maybe one or two. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at the most, it's probably like three to five. But five is like an extreme condition. This is ridiculous. Where you've had more than twenty people, and even even agents saying, "Yo, fuck you, we're backing out." Like it is goddamn retarded for them to to be at this level and doing it. Like it's it's insane. I'm looking at the Twitter page right now of Fandom Fest. Their banner is still advertising. That's Weird Al Yankovic, Paul McGain, and a few others that have canceled are going to be there. <laughs> so they didn't change that photo. So you look at it. It's yeah. the Eighth Doctor and Weird Al right there. Not front and center. That went to skeet, skeet, skeet. And so, <laughs> but the, the doors open here. Uh, six hours ago, VIPs are in the door. 30 minutes till regular admission comes in. Who's going to, who's excited to meet Matthew Lillard and a bunch of others. 20 minutes till everyone comes in. And then five hours ago, Paul Michael Glazer, the original Starsky is in the building. And then <laughs> Sam Jones and Sean Gunn are in the building five hours ago. And that well, was the next tweet. Well, let, let's see. It's, um, it's, uh, 10, 10 o'clock East Eastern Standard time right now, which means that it's, it's done for Friday. Uh, unless unless we're open till till eleven, which I doubt. It's usually like three to ten Friday. That's it. Oh, oh here we go. Or five to ten Friday. Usually, usually, the, usually those are the times on uh, Friday. And then and, and then Saturday is like uh, ten to seven, I think. Wow, that's that's yeah. Matt Suricon goes to like one a.m. So <laughs> that's what I'm used to. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, well, like, Dragon Con's 24-7 for four days, like, you're wandering around like, that, that third night, and you're just like, what's going on, where am I? So a three-day ah. pass is 150 bucks? Yeah. No, jeez. Th- uh, I'm looking at one of the uh, threads where somebody, like, tweeted back to them, co- like, replying to one of the things, and it says, yes, can we get a confirmation on Skeet, 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 Skeet? That, there was only one Skeet. <laughs> <laughs> it says, I just looked on their app and their website. The app is saying he is no longer going to be there, but the website says he is. And it says, thank you, because I can't get no answer for them. It says, you're welcome. I can't get any answers back either. They really need to update everything. I just seen a post on Facebook that they drove two hours for Skeet, and he is not there. 
Oh, yeah. If people are saying that, the knee is not there. That means that Lillard is there, and that's it. <laughs> so there is no skeet, 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 skeet. All right. Jeez. So, the, so the, the, I'm looking at the site, and the hours are Friday, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. So it's over now. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Vendor hours, and then they have their like after after hours events. Whoa! And then Sunday is 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., which nobody says that long. They said they stay till about two, and they fucking leave. Yeah. Now, did somebody so, say Brenda Strong was supposed to be there? But I don't see her in the. Uh... Yeah, they probably raised her picture like quick, fast, in a hurry. Uh, so and the chick from uh, Andromeda is in there. The blonde. Whatever. Yeah. I like her. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, for for Dragon Con, we're getting John Cusack, who, who she's pro- he's definitely going to be there because it's Dragon Con. They know how the fuck run a fucking convention. They've been doing it for thirty years. Yeah. It seems like it's just Matthew Lillard and fucking uh, Starsky sitting in a room by themselves right now. Uh, it, form, it takes place at the Jefferson Mall, formerly an AC, 150,000 square feet event space. So it's Matthew Lillard and fucking Starsky in a 150,000 squ- square foot space, probably by themselves. I feel, just hanging I feel, out. Yeah, I feel really bad because a friend of mine is vending it, and you know he's probably not going to make his money back, which really sucks. And then, like you know, Kenner Mars gonna be like, "Oh, don't worry about it. We, you know, we'll get we'll get your free table for the next one." It's like there might not be a there might not be a next one. So, yeah. well, Sam Dude, Jones and Sean Gunn, you know, five hours ago were listed in the building. The the real thing to see is how many people are tweeting and cross posting to. Uh, so we have a we have a Vine. It looks like I guess is that still a thing of Sean Gunn? No, I Vines think. are gone. Well, it's an eight second video of him doing something. But, um, yeah, considering that even what people are posting isn't that active, this is, yeah, this is, this con is, uh, it's going to be under new management soon. <laughs> it's, it's starting or, to sound like, it's starting to sound like DashCon all over again. What was, what, what was DashCon? That was the horribly failed experiment of a Tumblr con. <gasps> yeah, I heard about that. Oh my god, oh, yeah, I, was, I remember that now. I heard about this, and I was just fascinated by the, the absolute train wreck this turned out to be. I like spent days looking up videos on YouTube and like finding articles about how horrible it was because I was just laughing my ass off the whole time. It's like they advertise X, like Steam Powered Giraffe and people like that, who backed out long before, but they never took him off the bill. Like, a lot of the panels never showed up. They didn't refund anything. Yeah. And their sorry excuse for making up for all the disappointment was offering a free ball pit <laughs> or offering people extra time in the already free ball pit. And the ball pit was nothing but a little inflatable kiddie pool in the middle of this giant empty room. Yeah. Yeah, you can still see images. <laughs> on. That's probably the one I'm thinking of. That yeah. yeah, just failed miserably. Yeah, like, I'm looking. I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking at Fanfest on on Instagram, and it's just like a. <laughs> it's pretty sad. There's people there. Like things are happening, but it's not. It's not pretty. Oh man, he was just rolling my about this. And hey, there's like, a I, there, 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 there's a furry there. That's that's not good. Oh boy, there, there's one beautiful video where like they called all the attendees into one which is pretty sad when you can fit all your attendees in one room. Some guy gets up in the front. Uh, the hotel says we owe them more money, so we need you all like pony up all this money in like, the next 15 minutes or we're getting shut down. Oh, Damn. Jesus Christ. That's horrible. Yeah, that is the one I'm thinking about. It is Dash Con. Yeah, and the beautiful part is you can hear someone in the audience yelling, screaming out, that's extortion! <laughs> Not at the hotel, at the hosts. So somehow they raise the money, but they never found out where that money went. I used to work for a hotel. No <laughs> hotel would, in the middle of an event say, you didn't pay us enough, give us more money now. That's not how they do things. So all the attendees just got like screwed twice. First for buying tickets in the first place, and then, you know, giving more money to keep the thing going, which <laughs> there was nothing to keep going. Yeah, I remember hearing about the Tumblr event. Like, it was the first and last one that they will ever do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there was some kind of legal action against the organizers because it was such a, a mess. 
Yeah, I can't even imagine. Huh. All right. So, before we start our next segment, are any other things people want to say about Fest, Con, Star Wars, whatever? Yeah, don't don't go to any first year or second year or third year cons. Wait till the fourth year and then go. Want to get all the kinks worked out. Uh, yeah, exactly. And don't go to Comic Con. Why? <laughs> well, it just you have to deal with too many fat chicks, and you can just see all the trailers <laughs> online. So <laughs> he's not wrong. Yeah, you don't no, he isn't. That. And he you don't makes a hear, good point. You don't have to hear useless useless cheering over all the dialogue I want to listen to. It's very true. Yeah, you, you have to wait in line for, for 18 hours to watch a 30-second trailer and then hear Asel talk about it for an hour. And it's for free on online. This is, this, is, this is why I'm a big fan of Dragon Con, because it's, it, it's across four, like four or five hotels in Atlanta, and you get mm-hmm. to drink and do whatever the hell you want for those four days. So they really, like, it's all open those entire four days, like, straight. What do they um, do there? Like, I'm... I'm not really familiar on Dragon. There are okay if you download the app. There are various tracks you can go to workshops, learn how to make swords, learn how to fight, learn how to like survive a zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a film festival as well where you can go watch uh, new movies from the area and people who submitted there. That's cool. Um, there's Q and A's. I, I know the big thing now is they're doing the Stargate 20th anniversary, which I'm really happy about because I get to go meet um, a Christopher Judd who played Tilk in SG One, which I've never met the guy, so that's gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, also, John Cusack's going to be there. What the fuck? Come on. Oh, well. Yeah. So is John Barrowman. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it's, like, I've done it, I've done it, like, five or six years at a time. And it's a, it's a, it's a lot of fucking fun. It is a lot I've, of fun. I think I've heard about you talking about it on the sh- uh about it on the show a little bit, but I just never really knew what it was. Yeah, because the first time me and a friend went, like, 10 or 12 years ago, and, like, I slept on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> with like, it was like eight or it was like eight or nine other people in the hotel room. Like it was a nice hotel room. We all gave like the main person our money. We we drove down there, and you know it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Because I mean, you like even the vendors, like you get crazy, crazy vendors there. Um, I know there's a guy who makes a lot of like um props from shows. I know I'm gonna buy like eight of them for sure. Ooh, Karen Gillan's gonna be there too. Yeah. Oh. There's... And Jonathan Frakes for Jeff Hicks, who we were talking about. Fat Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction the other day together. Do what now? Uh, Jonathan Frakes. He's going to be there? Yeah. Riker. Oh, shit. Commander yeah, Riker. he's Riker. No, because Jeff and I were talking about Unsolved Mysteries and Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction the other day. And... Yeah, he wrote that and directed it, a lot of it, too, didn't he? Oh, shit. Napoleon Dynamite himself <laughs> will be there. So which yeah. con are we talking about now? Dragon Con or Comic Con? Dragon. I lost track. We're Clean talking about Dragon Con. All right. Special bedtime. Lena Headey's going to be there, but that's probably because she really needs the money. Yeah. She, she She's broke. Who, who Who's that? Ooh, Alex Kingston's going to be there. Stan Lee. Lena <laughs> Headey. Lena Headey. Who, who is she? Cersei Lannister. She was in um, uh, 300. She was the wife of... of um, oh, dude, she's awesome. Holy she's shit. A, what's his name? Yeah, the main she character. is awesome. Dude, she oh. was she was in she she was she was mama from Dread. She's fucking amazing. Yeah, well, wasn't Billy she in the... Piper. Billy Piper. <laughs> Michael Lil... Rooker. Wait, oh well, Ro- Rooker's kind of like he he's he's iffy on on guests. He's iffy on, on. on attendees. So yeah. Guess what do you say? Lit- be there. Who? What? Huh? Uh, William Shatner. He will also be at Dragon Con. There was something William on my Shatner. wing. Some something on my wing when I came into Atlanta. Matt Smith, Kevin Sorbo. So, no, you said that wrong, Kendo. He'll be at Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking dork! <laughs> data from sure. Star Trek will be there for all you. Oh, Star I love Trek Data. Friends. I love Data so much. <laughs> Wait, is, is is Jordy gonna be there? Is Jordy gonna be there? So Lavar Burton. I don't know. I'm looking. I love Lavar Burton. I do too. No, no, Lavar Burton. That's a shame. Aww, man, I'd, I'd go for Lavar Burton. I just asked. I wanted, him I wanted, I wanted him to, I wanted him to read, read me a book. Yeah, I'd be it's like, so book. when you were, when you were in Roots, was O.J. Simpson really that fast, or did you have to, like just play it up? <laughs> did you think that he might kill you if he caught you? <laughs> Allegedly. 
<laughs> oh, dude, no, I, I love Lamar Burton. I've, I've, I met him, at, I think I, in passing, I, I wanted to meet him, but like his line was too long. Like, ah, oh, fuck. And then he left for the weekend from, uh, for a convention I was doing. Dude, when I was a kid, I fucking loved everything Lamar Burton because Reading Rainbow was one of my favorite shows. Hey, oh, yeah. How many people go to Dragon Con? Gee whiz. Uh, probably like 60 to 80,000. Holy crap. It's it, it, it never reaches like like San Diego Comic Con numbers. It never reaches those numbers because like there's not enough rooms or hotels in the city nearby for people to go. But I I know Uber is like all fucking crazy like like back and forth all the time. But that, that's what I did last year. I went one day last year um, and um, had had a good time. If somebody sold me their ticket for fifty bucks, just fine. Um, but I I got a weekend pass this time, so I'm I'm good to go. Um, and the guy now, plays Cisco from The Flash is listed too. Ooh. I'd like to meet Billy Piper. I'd ask her a bunch of questions or about the Call Girl show. Oh shit! Uh, what the hell was it called? It was like Diary of a Call Girl. I think yeah. Or Confessions of a Call Girl, something like that. I don't know. All I know is it oh, blew no, no, my no. mind when I saw Secret, her. In that. Secret Diary of a Call Girl. Yeah, that's it. You're like yeah. so, like, were you really banging on set, or was that just like <laughs> simulated? She was pregnant. On one of those, she actually had a child. I mean, there's a, if you ever watched the Graham Norton show, there's a clip of her talking about um, having to clean up because she was lactating. <laughs> I'm serious. It, it's pretty thanks, funny. They, thanks, Brian. That, you're welcome. That made, made it all better. Yeah, you're welcome. No charge. <laughs> Isn't gross or anything at all. <laughs> it's only a natural thing, man. We're just talking body fluids, you know? So who else is there? A bunch of other people I've never heard of. I'm sure they're famous for something or another. Yeah, I'll figure it out when I get there, I'm sure. So, Nick, are you going the uh, uh, whole time? Yeah, I'll probably. I know I get my. I'll try to get my ticket Thursday, and I'll try to go and look at the vendor area and just try to buy shit immediately because, you know, I'm a big guy and getting shirts of my size is like really difficult. So I'm gonna get some really nerdy shit while uh, while I can. So how far? I mean, are you getting a hotel room or are you just staying at home? No, man, no. I'll I'll, I'll probably like I'll probably Uber down like all the days just because it's a lot easier for me to do that because I can get like super fucked up and just like order an Uber and get back home, so I'm good. So no Marta. No, fuck that. <laughs> no, I'm not doing a Marta. I uh, seriously want to go to this. Yeah, it's a it's it's a lot of fun. It it really is. It's it's one of the it's one of those giant conventions that's actually worth your time doing. Uh, because there's so much to do, so much to hang out with. I mean, even then, like I know the, the I think the main hotel is a Marriott, and just the costumes that go on there, like Saturday Saturday night or whatever, is insane. Like everybody just makes a costume for Dragon Con just to show it off. Like it's crazy. Cosplay photography. I'm hoping. What if you just? That. What if you just showed up naked and was like, "This is my costume." Uh, they have guidelines usually. I mean, as long as you had like a sensor bar over your junk, you'd be fine. Yeah, oh, easy. that'd be a good idea. Just like get like a black cardboard thing and just like tape it over your junk. Yeah, and like it's, it's censored. It's usually like no junk no nipples and no butt crack. What if it's a chick? Same. <laughs> That's stupid. Speaking of nipples, <laughs> um, on the show, Jeff mentioned that Gal Gadot like had dead topless pictures. Yes. I was looking, but I there find. are so many fakes, I couldn't tell which ones were the real ones. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I only found the fake ones. But yeah. while we're talking about Gal Gadot, did anybody else see the Justice League trailer? Yes. I did. Didn't did Gal I? look like really fit in that one? No. <laughs> are you not trying did. to bait me, or did I jump the gun and miss the joke yet again? No, I was just throwing that out there. Uh, yeah, Justice League. I, the Justice League trailer, I will say this about it. Of the DC movies that have come out, it's the first time I've seen a trailer for one of the movies that I haven't been like, I don't want to see that. I yeah. I saw the I was like, okay, I kind of do want to see the Justice League movie. Maybe not right away, but I do would like I would like to see the Justice League movie. And I seem to be a minority of one. I think he's talking to Aquaman. Alfred is. I don't think he's talking to Superman. Or the group. I disagree because You're... if you look closely at the uh, corner, 
you could see kind of like a blurry red spot there, as right. if that's his cape. But there's also a blue, a green reflection in uh, Alfred's glasses. So that's there, there's a divided camp as to whether it's the Green Lantern or Superman. Alfred's way too cool to be talking about Sea Man. Let's see what you did there. So well, the, he's a, the reason safe. I think that is because we know he turns him down because we've had the trailer, the you know the first trailer, you know the more more and more less. Well, he said no, you know, and I think he shows up. I think Superman does show up, but I think he's more of a Deus Ex Machina. But we'll see. I think he has to because I think there was like an action figure line that was revealed and it had Superman. Well, there was already a group picture with Superman in it. Like three oh, there months was? ago. I've yeah. not yeah. been paying attention to this movie. Superman. And has um, Wonder Woman uh, surpassed Batman v Superman for gross sales? I bet you not. Uh, yes. No. Is that like the... Hang on. 800 million mark, right? I'm looking. Oh, it did? Well, okay. It looks like it did back in June. Oh, Both thank you. No, that was domestic box office. I mean total. I don't care. A win's a win, son. Should have been more specific before we looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Too late now. Well, hey. And so, anyway. But now, not in totals. Only in domestic. Because it was in like 40 million theaters. It was like in every theater. All right. So, so we get to the main of our interview section. Somebody's clicking really furiously over there. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's me. I'm sorry. Looking at that video of the nominee, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm playing a game. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wait we're a... still carrying you Dion, then. Dion Jr. Yep. You're sorting through the Gal Gadot pictures. Um, <laughs> the Ask Samoan section did a... Uh, I read an article there about yet. how there's a campaign, uh, campaign to get Wonder Woman nominated for Best Picture. What does everybody think of that? Of the year? Yeah. There's a campaign for it. It's not. Is it like an Academy it. Award? I don't really I care. I believe so. Oh, good grief! Watch. It's not that good a movie. I don't watch I don't award shows. That's what I was saying. I, there's not really any reason why it would win, and all these girls are saying, "Oh, she deserves it." And but it's an such a it's an honor to be nominated. <sighs> I, I don't think that's how it works. It'd be crazy I, if it gets nominated. I think it doesn't just, deserve. It's not even, I wouldn't even call it good. I mean, it's okay. The only good thing about it is that it's not offensively bad like all the other DC movies. I don't really care. Like, the Academy Awards, I don't watch it. I don't watch a lot of famous people slap each other on the back. I don't really care. I don't like it either. But it's just, you know. Yeah. I leave money, but watch it. It's too politically correct for me. But. The, the, there's, there's nothing about that movie that strikes me as, as, as unless we're going to have an Academy Award for the best movie directed by a woman with an all-female uh, writing staff and an all-female, you know, you'd have to divide it up to it because there's nothing about that movie that strikes me as, as Academy worthy. It's well, Wonder Woman effects is were not movie. that great. It's acting. If Chris Pine's not in that movie, that movie doesn't make $4. Um, yeah. it's Damn, personally, right. if Not we're going to have, if we're going to have a category about, uh, you know, a w- best picture for a movie with a all female cast and directed by a woman or anything, it would have to be Jennifer does Fresno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a good story. Yeah, but that didn't come out this year. Doesn't matter. You didn't say this year. It's, yeah. I just said. Best picture. Yeah, but that's what they in that category each year. But yeah, I, this is a different academy. This is the Kendo Academy. The Kendo Academy. All right, I watched that over the real academies. And we we, dude, maybe I should start my own award show. No, the hell, the rises, the rises, the rises uh, exist. So why the fuck not? It's okay. The there'll be a category. There'll be a category called the coolest Samoan alive. Nick, you're nominated, buddy. Yeah, and I and I won't win because The Rock and uh, fucking Jason Momoa are there. <laughs> well, The Rock is sold out yeah. with being in shitty movies, so Nick. Oh I'd shit, you're Nick, you're the forgetting Rock? the person that judges these things and makes the call is me. 
Yeah. And don't forget, The Rock was in the tooth fairy. So what you're saying is I have to blow you, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm saying you just stand a really, really good chance just because I don't really care about Jason Momoa and The Rock's okay, but I know you. That's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of The Rock, didn't uh, Reality Frank, wasn't it you that posted that in the Facebook thing about The Rock formation? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that showed up in my feed. I had to share that. It was so damn funny. That is fucking hilarious. I just saw that. I was like, God damn, it makes sense. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. For those right. of you who haven't seen it, it was a picture of The Rock and Chris Rock and Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah. All like together. Yeah. Bow with the bow. He was drinking funny things and he was smoking funny things. I read an article today that was called like the big like the top ten bands where like the fans are all douchebags or something like that. <laughs> Kid Rock was number one. Really? Yeah. Not 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 Rob Zombie? No, Rob Zombie didn't make the cut. It was just Kid Rock, like so Kid Rock has like the biggest douchebaggiest fan base according to this article. Well that Fuck doesn't surprise Bob me at all. Uh, no, I would say Rob Zombie's like Music fans aren't as big as douchebaggy. They're his movie fans. I would say were probably that would be his. Jesus Christ. They will. They, they will. They will die for him. It's like, oh, Halloween that he made was the best. It's like, fuck you. They all look like him. They all have you know gross long hair and gross beards. And they're all posers. Yep. Would you guys like to hear my Rob Zombie impression? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So here's a Rob Zombie song. Bada 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 bada. Yeah. Wow, that's it's, it's like it, it, it's like he was in the room. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Get Rob it's, Zombie off this podcast. <laughs> Special, yeah. So there you go. The, every Fancast time episode eight guest starring Rob Zombie. Yeah. Every, every time we say anything negative about him on the other podcast, I always tag him in everything I've ever said negative about him because <laughs> I doubt I doubt he'll ever do anything about it. He just ignores the fucking tweets. Even though his, his his wife is a cunt as well, but you know whatever. That's I was an- so proud when John Carpenter <laughs> called him a piece of shit. Dude, oh my god, me too. Holy shit! Like I I, I have that I have that episode saved and I have it on repeat sometimes to remind me. It's like I have it yep. in my favorites on YouTube. <laughs> oh man, I'm so happy that then he just blatantly called him an asshole. I was like, God damn it, John, you're old and you're wily and you're amazing. I know, right? <laughs> His mm-hmm. career arc is just ever since him and like White Zombie broke up, it's just never been the same. <laughs> I haven't even seen his um, Halloween two. I've seen the first uh, remake, and that was a mistake. But I hear yeah. two is worse. Well, two is worse because it's basically it's basically more of him injected, and then like in the beginning, he gives you the fucking meaning behind the metaphor. Something about a white horse or something. Oh, God. And his, 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 yeah, and his, his wife is in there, you know, again as well because she's the mom. So, uh-huh. you know, Shit. you have to put. Zombie. Yeah, he, he has to put her in a movie or else she'll complain and bitch and not blow him for two, for two days. So he <laughs> has to put her in a movie. <laughs> um, Only two days? I heard that there's not any Halloween music in it. Like, the score isn't doesn't have the. Is that true or no? As far as I know, I don't think it has the original. No, it doesn't have the original score. He may have done one himself, but it doesn't have the original score. Um, was it like off of the like any of the original. I I don't think so. I really don't. Because think so. I thought I read somewhere, and Rob Zombie said that it he thought it didn't fit. Yet it's a Halloween movie, and if it doesn't fit its own music, then that's just saying how it doesn't bad fit it at all. It, yeah. Oh no, exactly. It doesn't fit the the genre. It's like Star fit the, Wars with like a. Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack. It just doesn't work. Don't say that. Jeff will hear it and he will do that. Don't say that. What happened? I missed it. Jeff, cool. Jeff, if, Jeff, if you're listening to this, don't please please don't beg me to put those together for you. I probably <laughs> will, but please don't make me. Yeah. The shootout theme plays whenever he's in the Battle of the Heaven. <laughs> don't say things like that, Augie. God damn it. Next word for me. <laughs> Nick, when I win the lottery, man, I'll hook you up. Oh God! Oh, that reminds me. I need to show you guys my, my horrible trailers that I made. I don't think I don't think the other guys have seen them. I, I didn't even know they existed until last night when I was listening to the podcast. God, it's it's horrible. I know. Uh, yeah, um, it's oh, man, it's so bad. I fell off the couch laughing at the titles. There, there are things that me and my friends have done, and we're not proud of them, but we are proud of them, so it's fine. <clears throat> By the way. 
I'm like the captain of a destroyer ship with as many depth charges. I'm trying. Dude, to I'm on. I'm, I'm on four right now. That's me too. Yeah, I'm on four right now, and I'm I'm feeling that it's happening. That's the official drink of uh, the fan cast tonight. The depth charge. The depth Des- charge. <laughs> description. <laughs> description in the or the description. It'll be in the description. I'm gonna say link is in the description, but there's no link. I got confuzzled. I'll put a recipe link in. How about that? It's essentially a shot of bourbon or whiskey and a beer, and you just take the shot glass with the booze in it and just boop into so the glass. So what, what are you mixing with it? What kind of beer? Uh, stag. Got some stag and uh, colloquially known around here as steak, taters, and gravy. Uh, and uh, I'm using some wild turkey that I had left over from last night's. Uh, wait, dead. hold on, hold on. Hold on. Which wild turkey? 101 or the regular stuff? 101. Ooh. Yeah. Now, the regular stuff, I used that last night for the old dead birds. Nice. That I was telling you about. Oof. Those were rough. All right. Here's the second one, second trailer, Grindhouse X, X trailer we ever did. It'll actually it load. I don't know. Did I put it in there or did I just fucking forget? There we go. Way to put it on Vimeo because uh, uh, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube, YouTube hates us. YouTube hates us, so I put it on, on Vimeo. King uh, Doug and Jackie Jones and Nigger Mortis. Hold Links on, in the on. description. Oh, God. You're going to link to that trailer? Jesus. <laughs> What'd you shoot on that? What? It's obviously not a very good, uh, not a excellent low light camera. It's really washed out. Well, no, no, no. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of post work I did to make it look very seventies and in that, in that oh, era. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. that's what I did. <laughs> so oh god, your, I'm um... watching this. This is great. So with your okay, Nikon? okay. The, 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 the guy, the, the, no, I no, I think I used my hard drive camera, my Canon Vixia, like H H D H G twenty or whatever at that point. No, uh, the if you're watching if you're watching the first one, uh, the guy in white faces me. I have a question: Were those re- real female legs, or was it just a prop? No, 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 no. They were real, real, real female legs. It was our friend Ani. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's even some Stroke Club Massacre crosslinks here. I gotta see this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Like, they use my Vimeo for some other things as well. Like whenever we're doing stuff. So there's even the interview with like Bob and Alicia and stuff on there. Yeah, and she wasn't at the premiere, right? Mm-hmm. Alicia, she was she, not. Yeah, she was not. I, I will fund these once I am, you know, rich enough with fuck you money. I will hook. <laughs> I will be like Nick. I need cunt get enough in nigger mortis to be made into real. Movies. Oh God, they will. They, they will be driving midnight double features immediately, <laughs> and we will go. I will host like a huge party. I'll fly everybody in. Yeah, we'll have some depth charges. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, you say that like it's a bad thing. Yeah, no, I, I am. I am working on Frank and Thug right now. Can you give us a brief synopsis of what Frank and Thug is about? Yeah, Frank and Thug is about, um, let's see, I forget the great character's name for life of me, but we have an actor who's, uh, let's see, a, uh, a brother, a, um, a younger brother who loses his older brother to, uh, to uh, gang violence. And he gets called by their, their third brother, who's a scientist, and, you know, who wants to revive, um, I think his name is uh, B in the movie. And um, he, he gets, uh, he wants to revive him, but with weed. Also, we have like uh, we have like uh, bikers and motor, motor, motorcycle guys and like leather and stuff. We're actually shooting the party scene uh, Sunday, this Sunday. Um, but we're about three days into production. We're shooting like once a week now um, until October. Um, I'm working with uh, the company's name is a Buck Short Productions. I'm working with Daniel Page and Cassie Rose and Richard Tanner. Um, if anybody listening to this, please give them some love. You guys give them some love too. Go like them on all their social media and retweet and reshare and everything their stuff. Um, they're good dudes. They uh, they were. Ha- I'm having a blast uh, shooting with them. It's a lot of fucking fun. So it's it, it's going to be a good time. Excellent. Yeah, send me their particulars, uh, their email, their um, social media links and stuff like that. We'll be I will be sure to put that in the descriptions. Right on, man. Right on. Okay, do we have anything else to go over before the main event, gentlemen? Uh, I don't think so. All right, well, that tr- transitions us into our main topic discussion of the evening, interview with a Samoan. God. With us tonight, we have your friendly neighborhood Samoan, Nick Udom, 
and he'll be here to discuss some things. We got some questions for the guys. So, Brian, would you like to start? Sure, I'll start. So, Nick, um, my my question is kind of uh, gets gets you a chance to tell a story. So, I've okay. given my side of our our one and only meeting, but <laughs> I've never heard your side. You know, your thoughts and impressions of of how we met and all that stuff. Okay, that was a really that, okay. We so so we met March eighteenth, twenty seventeen, because it was a premiere of Strip Called Massacre. And you came down for it. We talked like months, months in advance, like you know what, what hotels, where are you going, like you know what's going to happen, things like that. So I'm talking to, I think I'm talking, no, no, I know exactly what I'm talking. To. I'm talking to Meredith Kerbel, our makeup artist, and you come up behind me and be like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" And I immediately know who you are because of the picture you had on like social media or something like that. I know exactly who you are. And um, I think right before that point, I had, I had ran in with Jeff, Phil, and Dan to give the hard drive to the owner of the theater to have him download the movie or at least play the movie, like f- figure out which file it was to play the movie off of. So it was hectic trying to get there. Traffic was there. We parked behind the building and shit. And, you know, I met you and I know it was like a rushed thing immediately. So I felt like an asshole immediately because I was just like, uh, he's come here to, to see my movie and meet me. And I'm giving him like a really short, like, meeting. So I felt horrible. <laughs> Now, this is then, Al introducing myself, too. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. Said, you were just, yourself, yeah. You were introducing yourself in the lobby. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then we went inside, and then, like, I made you change seats. Yeah, <laughs> and that's I, right. And then I left, like, three minutes later. Right. Yeah, because I was like, I'm not going to watch the movie that I made because I don't fucking want to see it because I've seen it a million times editing it. And um, I'm pretty sure you and Jeff, like, conversed during the whole thing. But I was out in the lobby getting fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Because the guy, let's see, Mark, who played the club owner, bought me two beers. I downed them immediately. And then we had the guy who was in the Jeep. Uh, his name's uh, Daniel Shook, I think. Um, he got me two shots. And I was fucking lit. Well, you were um, wound was... up before, so. Well, some things happened and, um, like, shit almost hit the fan, but it didn't. So we're fine. Yeah. So, yeah, so not only I didn't introduce myself, so I just walked up to you and said, I think, Mr. Nick, mid-conversation <laughs> with two other people, didn't yeah. say excuse me, didn't just, and then... Yeah, 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 Meredith, Meredith Kerbal and her, and, her, and her husband Matthew were, yeah, where, where I was talking to them, yeah. So when I walked away, did they say anything like, who the hell was that? They did, and I said, oh, it's, 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 it's a friend of mine from the podcast that I run. That's what I said to them. <laughs> So, yeah, I went up there and found the guys. Uh, of course, before I saw Jeff, he saw me. Um, and then what he's talking about in the theater, we were basically all in one row because we were skipping every other seat. And Jeff and I were sitting there chatting. And then Nick comes over and says, move over. <laughs> so And then he left. As soon as the, the, the lights went down, Nick <laughs> runs out. <laughs> yeah and i was like and i was like i'm out and then like i went to the lobby because like that's that, that's my thing it's like i don't watch the things i make i just don't yeah but i don't want to hear the fan reactions i don't want to hear them like incorrectly laugh at dumb shit that i've i've done so i just don't listen to them at all yeah. i i will go in the lobby or go further outside of the theater and just stand outside and smoke or drink or be on my phone or whatever i just don't want to hear it yeah so and then as soon as the movie's over you run back in did you like it what that's you, because you be honest <laughs> That, that's because I had my phone on the running time of the movie. I know it's like 142 and a half minutes and some frames. Uh, it's been a while. I've tried to forget it a lot. So, um, yeah, it's like I had my phone ready for that. As soon as like, it went off in my pocket, I was like, yep, the movie's over. The credits are rolling. So I know what's going on. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know you were there for the credits because that's part of what uh, Jeff even commented that you had your short version of your name. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, because if I had the long version of my name, nobody would ever be like, who the fuck is that guy? Like, the whole time, I know that's what's going to happen. Right. right. So, yeah, I've – sometimes it all depends on a situation where I'm not comfortable. I'm, I'm known to either hide in a corner or do exactly what I did, which was to walk up to you mid-conversation, uh, very rude. Um, <laughs> you, no, no, you were not rude. You were not – trust me, you were not rude. But, uh, He's funny rude. Thing was, and not the funny thing was – no, the funny thing was that, like, Jeff, Phil, and Dan, like, bust into my place, like, about three hours before that, and are just like, hey, we're here now. And, like, Jeff goes and takes a shower, then I go take a shower, and once once I'm done, like, we immediately leave. 
I have the hard drive, my computer, everything, you know, in case shit goes, shit hits the fan, which it didn't. Once the guy had my hard drive and he knew what file to, to pull from to play the movie, it was all good. Um, so we were, we were fine. And all the, like, after, like, afterwards, I didn't, I, I think I went with you guys, like, down the street to, uh, to, uh, another, bo- another place where we got food. Um, but I didn't, I didn't go with the main cast and crew because I was just like, I, I don't want to do that. And, uh, and I went with you guys and just like drank some more. I think Phil brought me, bought me shots about myself a shot. Like I was, I was, I, I barely remember sitting at the table and talking to anybody. Like I barely remember that. Yeah. I well, was, I was out. And we did have a couple of the actresses uh, with us. Yeah. 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 You had uh, Daniel Page there who was, uh, I think, um, Kim in yes. Triple Massacre. You had Cassidy, who was like, you know, kind of like I forget. She was Dick Pick Girl, right? Dick Pick movie. Girl. I, yeah, I was gonna so. ask her if that's who she was, but I, I didn't. But yeah, and Danielle's the one I actually liked from the trailer the most, so that was good. Yeah, well, well, well I mean, she was she was the one who was always dancing on the pole all the time, and who were who we'd asked to do it, and she's like, yeah, I'm fine. She would get in her like lingerie or whatever she had that day, and get on the pole and get in her slutty shoes, and you know, dance, and that, that was it. Um, you know, and she keeps saying how how a horrible dancer she is. And I was like, no, you're fine. You did good for you know being a background actor and everything. So, um, it was it was perfectly fine. So, alrighty. Next, who's next, Kendo? Frank. I don't know who's oh, yeah. tapping Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it goes Brian, Frank, Augie, me. All right. All right, Frank. What's your question? Okay. Uh, what future movie projects do you have in the works? Hmm. Well, right now it's Frank and Thug. I know Bob's working on something that's uh, going to come out that we're um, that I'm probably going to be working on as well. That's that's pretty that's pretty damn good. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. And then there's another movie that uh, the first girl who died, Jenna, she's the one who died in the forest. She's that writing a movie awesome. as well. Yeah, I wanted it to look like like uh, what's the last house on the left, and I think I achieved that, which made me really happy. Um, she's written a, a slasher movie that's female, strong, female based, but it's like a lot of lesbian love scenes, which I'm I'm down to film and edit. So we'll see how that goes. She's still in the process of of getting people in the process of pre, she's in the process of pre, pre production. So um, I'll see how that works out. Um, but yeah, that, that's it for now. I mean, hopefully, I'll be talking to my friend Scotty. And uh, we're figuring out some other things, other shorts, other 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 movies we can make and things as well, and just really uh, ramping things up. So, are you doing anything of those things with Bob or uh, Frank and Thug? No, Frank and Thug's with uh, with Richard and a Buck Short. Uh, Bob, I'm doing. Uh, I think it's a Killer Hand, is what he's, he's calling it. Okay. And then the other one is Killing Kenzie with with Jenna. So um, I'll I'll figure out. Um, what she wants to do with that, if she wants to distribute and become her own her own production company, or if she wants to give it to Real Bloody, or what the whole deal is with that. All right, Bugs. Oh, um, I was just gonna kind of ask a filmmaking question again, but uh, sure. What advice would you give, and um, how did you kind of become a filmmaker? Um, I'm not really good at anything else. I hate nine to five jobs. If I have to sit in an office and work every day, I'd, I would shoot myself and everybody else. Um, I have to be creative because I have like a million ideas. Like even even like when I text message my friend Scotty, who lives in Knoxville, mainly it's, mainly it's to make it a notepad as to like I dumb ideas I have. Like he has dumb ideas, he'll text me. I'll have dumb ideas and text him. And work on things together. I mean, I, I mean, even now I'm, I'm writing something that's kind of extremely close to my heart that uh, that I'm that I'm writing with him and him. He's helping me figure out some scenes and how it's supposed to flow and how I want it to go. And um, I'm extremely satisfied with it. But it's 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 going to if I ever get the money to do it, it'll probably be around like one or two million dollars to do it because I would need that much money to get it done, get it done correctly. And things like that. But, I mean, I became a filmmaker because I think it was Back to the Future when I watched it as a, as a kid. And I loved the shit of that movie. And it really got me into science and learning about, it. like, do what now? I said I love it, too. Yeah, it really got me into science and reading those papers. And I was like, you know, oh, I, I, want, I want to become a scientist and get into physics. And then I learned, I looked at the equations. And I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> um, 
then I got into I got into ITT Tech, which was a mistake. And you know the the, the fucking promote the recruiters like, yeah, man, we 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 can do all all that stuff here. And they couldn't. Uh, I, I I did like one animation class, which took me three weeks three weeks to animate um, fucking Laura Croft Tomb Raider in a, like a fucking pixelated version. And I was like, I can't do this. But then I had an AV class where I was uh, the you you had to learn editing and camera work, and I was like, I can edit. I, I learned the editing stuff for better than anybody in my in my group. So I learned to do that, and I really loved that, and I really got into that, and um, just reading stuff and and constantly educating myself on the process and what to do, what things mean, what the lingo is, how to do that stuff is um, is really uh, is really important. But um, no, I, I, I you know, and, and I, I love telling stories. I love telling uh, stories in a visual medium and. I mean, I was I, I I would love to become a vlogger, but I my life is not that fucking interesting right now. <laughs> but I I I I would love to like do music videos and movies and photo shoots and all kinds of shit. Like I have ideas for all kinds of stuff, but I don't have the money to money right now to execute any of them. And that's the problem. Oh. But um, I you know I love filmmaking more than anything. I love the long days, the shitty hot sweaty days of holding a camera on my shoulder bending down where my back is about to break and you know cut like eight like 18 18 takes for a scene that shouldn't take longer than three um putting my equipment away driving home half fucking tired almost crashing like i love all that shit i really do to me to me that's to me that's the job i want that's the job i i i really um I really care about it's more than anything. Mm -hmm. I really wish you the best with, you know, your future with it. You know, I hope that somehow you could get the money to, you know, put your vision on screen. Thank, Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's next? Uh, I got a question. How many of the right. chicks from the movie set did you get to bang? <laughs> <laughs> None of them. None of them. Well, that's a shame. That's not a good yeah. question. Then. Um, Let's see. I didn't want to bang Alicia or, or Corinne because they were cunts. Um, um, Layla, I did. Is Layla wanted to bang because she was a redhead. Danielle as well because she didn't, didn't know her that well, but now I don't. Um, Aaron because you know it's Aaron Brown. Why the fuck not? Um, and all, a lot of the, the, the background strippers wanted to bang too because they were they were they were really hot. So why not? But no, I would I would be, be because of me being you know uh, the fucking ca fucking crew man basically lights, mics and cameras the entire time. I didn't have to, I I was too tired to fuck anybody. That's a shame. How yeah. many bones did you get on set? Uh, quite a f well. I mean, it was like the first day or two I got bones, and then like you know, it was one of those things where you kept seeing these real naked and towels all the time, where it just didn't matter anymore. It's like oh, okay, I've seen your tits and it's fine now. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. Kind of like being in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, I've seen you naked enough. I want to fuck somebody else. <laughs> Do you have a hot sister or a hot coworker? There you go. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Well, it's uh, Kendo's turn. I just went. Oh. You did. Sorry. <laughs> Fucking dementia, man. Yeah, I do. Oh, I'm looking at pictures. Oh, what am I saying? <laughs> I mean, I can keep going. I've got a million of them. Yeah. Well, uh, it's... I don't know. It was just one question each, or do we want to go to this for the next two hours? We can do this as long as we want. Nick doesn't care, I don't think. Yeah, I really don't. I'm, I'm really I'm really fucking drunk right now, so it's fine. See? So, all right, I'll, I'll see if I can go again. So, I, I know we that... have an after party like last time where we ask more. All right, well, I got another question then, since you guys are too big, bunch of fuck you guys. Go ahead. Uh, so, Nick, is it true that Samoans like to have turkey legs dipped in mayonnaise? No, that is that, that, that is that is a rumor and a myth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just make that up, or is that a real thing? <laughs> Nick knows where that comes from. I told him about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. Hang on, I'll share it. Uh, okay, then I got a follow-up question. How many coconuts have you cracked over your head? Uh, 32. Nice, nice, nice. Do you have any of those like crazy Samoan tribal tattoos? Uh, no, I don't. If you got into like a Samoa down where you had to like show them off how much more of a Samoan you are than other people, would you beat Roman Reigns? Um, obviously, it's Roman Reigns. Well, I mean, he's going to kick out at two, but don't you think you could beat him? Of course, that's why. Okay, good. I, I thought you were trying to, like, big him up. I'm like, fuck him. 
<laughs> okay, I got a question. If you could, if you got to work with any actor ever, living or dead, who would it be? Oh God, Vincent Price. Nice, <laughs> Vincent Price. And um, shit, hold on. Let me look. Let me look up his name. He's from Fright Night. And also, um, Planet of the Apes. Vincent Price was in Planet of the Apes. No, 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 not Vincent Price. There's another guy. Um, oh, shit, it's, it's gonna kill me now. I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, Roddy McDowell. Oh, that's who. Oh, that's a good one. He was in uh, Twilight Zone. Yep. Yeah, he did lots of great stuff. He did. He did, he did a bunch of good stuff. I love that guy. He was in every Planet of the Apes in the 1970s. All the all the original ones. I fucking love him. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to work with him. Mr. Price. Um, God, so many actors I'd love to work with, and so many that are underrated in Hollywood just because like they don't have like a fucking like massive Twitter following or some bullshit. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Next one. Uh, what college would you recommend for filmmaking? None. The College of Hard Knocks. That's what I would recommend. What? Take take that money and make a movie. Fuck up a lot and learn a lesson. Yeah, yeah college is a scam. Yeah, especially filmmaking school is a goddamn scam. Like they're like you you you've seen my retweets of no film school. Um, you can literally go to go to that site and learn way the fuck more than for free more than any film school will ever teach you. I mean, what I would do is go through a production school. Like if there's a video production class, do that. If it's like a community college, do that. Don't go to film school because they're going to teach you how to get how to how to like be like okay, well you need a fifty thousand dollar budget to make your movie first. Like no, you don't. No, you don't. You need your mind. But uh, I just wanted to know like would that what would help? I guess your chances of I guess you know would going to a film college help your chances or no or. I mean, no, I because to... because a lot of those kids, like I, I've, I've I've met a lot of those people. I've met a lot of those film school kids who are just like, yeah, I've been to film school. I know some shit. It's like, no, you fucking don't. What you what you've learned, what you've done in your safety net safety net college is easy. I could do if I, if I had a fifty thousand dollar safety net of a college. That's fine because they're the ones who are going to get the nice equipment, get the nice sound equipment, get all the they'll get all the cool shit, and you get to work with that. No. Film a movie on your goddamn phone and get, and get the sound off of a shitty boom mic and make a movie that way. Then you come fucking talk to me, okay? Um, you working with 4K cameras and a crew and cranes and like you know a, a, a you know a lot of people. That's easy, but convincing people of your idea and getting them on board—that's the magic. That's that. That's I completely where it is. agree. But, you know. Yeah. But um, I think I talked to you one night. It's like go 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 into marketing because marketing will fucking save your goddamn movie. If you know how to market, you know how to manipulate people, you know how to yes. tear pull pull their heartstrings and shit, and get get them to open their wallets. That's worth more than gold. And that's why you know I'm. I don't know if you've ever checked out my art page. I mean, I think I'm growing quite a bit with that. I want to do that and practice. So hopefully, I can design my own posters, which you know maybe I could. I don't know, just draw people in that way. I don't want. Yeah, to. I mean, the, like, okay, like uh, a, a good book to read is uh, Rebel Without a Crew, Rodriguez. Yes. Because he made him. He's he made a movie for seven thousand dollars. This is also in like you know eighty nine ninety. I want to say as well. So nobody get your hopes up. Um, and it, it, the way he did it is never going to happen again either. It's never going to fucking happen. But he made it for seven thousand dollars by by being in a medical facility for a month. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you read the whole book, it's 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 pretty it's pretty fucked up. But uh, he was doing medical tests and he found one that's like you know he he would make seven or eight thousand dollars, but he had to stay there for a month and he had to get like these little football shaped uh, skin patches cut out of his arm. Wow. Um. It was it was it, it was pretty it's pretty damning. But I mean, it's a good story. It's a great thing of you know how he made it. Another man wow. has his own. Another man has his own fucking TV station. He has he has El Rey Network, huh. where he shows luchador wrestling and old, yes. old fucking kung fu movies. Like that's the fuck you want, you know. And, and and he's always been about he's always been about like budgeting and how to get shit done, how to get shit done with quality but like on the cheap, which I think is very important to learn because nowadays you have these movies that are like you know two hundred fifty million dollars and they barely make it back. I believe the art comes first before the way the movie sounds or the way it looks because. 
I'd rather just people go, wow, that was a good story, or that was good uh, characters or writing, whatever, instead of just, oh, it looked good, or, oh, those, that CGI was fine, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because what, what, like I'm 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 a, I'm a big proponent of rewatchability. If I if I put it in your movie and I want to be like, yo, I want to buy the DVD so I can rewatch it like drunk with some friends on a Saturday night. That's what I that's what I want. That's what I go for. Mm-hmm. More yeah. than more than more than like the Marvel shit, which is like, oh, this is cool, this is awesome, and I'll never watch it again. More than likely, um, I'm never gonna buy it. I'm never gonna do anything like that. But I will I will buy fucking Slumber Party Massacre one, two, and three like on Blu-ray to watch them over and over again because they are trash. They are, they are awesome, and they are awesome. Like uh, the burning is another good example of that. That is that is basically a copy of uh, Friday the Thirteenth, but it's a fun fucking movie. And it's ridiculous and horrible, and it's it's just so much fun. Um, that's what I go for. That's what I like to go for, anyways. More than anything is rewatchability. Yeah, it may not be the best movie, but you want to rewatch it with your friends and get fucking drunk and play a drinking game with it as as, as you go on. I like that too. I don't think it should just be like a one time thing with. A movie, I, I, I like to own it, and you like to watch it over and over again. My favorite movies are movies that you can rewatch over and over again, and movies Which, that I do rewatch over and over again. Name name three. Spider Man Two, The Shining, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Ooh. I think that's my top three. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just not I like here. It. I like it. <laughs> Dave's not here, man. Oh. I still like uh, it. And I know Spider-Man 2 is a Marvel movie, but I just feel like it has so much art behind it. And I just think the whole the whole thing of how Peter Parker always has consequences, even if he's doing the right thing, I just think something about that's powerful. I mean, I won't ever go on and say just because it's my favorite movie that, uh, you know, it's better than any other movie ever made, but it's just personally my favorite and Maybe a little bit of that has to do with some nostalgia, but oh yeah, 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 definitely. Because I just like, per- I could personally just relate to it so much. Oh yeah, and then and then that's re- that's really what it boils down to is like if a movie can relate to you, and you to it, I mean that's that I think is more powerful than anything. Like um, I was in Best Buy earlier today, and I I I walked by uh, you know, new releases, and I saw Logan. I was like, Logan's a great fucking movie. But I'm not gonna buy it because I'm not gonna rewatch it ever. Like I watched it like probably twice for the podcast, but I'm I'm not gonna buy it, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, and and that that sucks. Like like John, like I know they had John Wick one and two there, and I was like I bought those because those are great. John, like John Wick's yeah, John Wick's amazing. It was a sleeper hit when it came out, and I thought it was fucking crazy as hell, and I loved it. We need a, uh, action movies to be like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Did you know that there's a website, or at least a guy that made a uh, poster like thing, tracking how many kills John Wick had in both movies and how he got them? <laughs> no. By the way, John Wick Two has a higher body count. I figured as much. No, I had the good fortune of watching both those movies last week, and I had never watched either one. And uh, I went to the Red Box and picked up both of them, and I was watching them and messaging father slice at the same time i was like dude have you ever seen john wick he goes god that movie's so fucking badass i'm like i know this is great he goes you, there's a second one i'm like i know i'm getting ready to watch he goes let me know how it is and i send him back it's like dude this movie the fucking body count has to be higher in this one he goes is it pretty cool it's like it's fucking great and he's like when the third one comes out we're going to watch him like you got it dude <laughs> love father slice he's cool yeah and i mean we need those blatant like action movies we need more of that just like we don't care about the story. Like the story is good enough, like a like a, a you know like enough to be like okay, we know what's going on. We don't need a lot of like filigree and like fancy bullshit. It's like just we don't need to know the basic story and why he's killing people. That's it. Yeah, it's like one of the first action movies I've watched in a very long time, where I'm like, this is just amazing. I have to own these because I have to be able to just sit down one day and say, you know what, I got four hours with Nundu. I want to watch both John Wick movies and just see fucking Keanu pile the bodies. Oh yeah. They don't make good shit like that anymore, except, well, I mean, th- they made those, but you know what I mean. Yeah. They're rarities. They're not that many. Exactly. All right. And yeah. any, any any other questions? Yeah, I got one. So on your, your faux trailers that you made, how much of a treatment for those movies are you making? Or ri- how much script writing do you do? Is it just kind of knowing what pieces you want to put in a trailer? 
Yeah, it's basically like what's it, what who, who who can we get? What well, like and then those those are done like in September October. So you have like all the all the like at the time I was living in Tennessee and I was working with a friend Scotty lived in Knoxville. It's like you know what can we and we had a we had a we had a um, the first time we did it we had a way of working it out. So I think that that Wednesday, that Wednesday we'd have because uh, it was six days and sixty six minutes to get the trailer to you know to to them. So that would start on that Wednesday. First time we did it, we were like, all right, let's let, let's let's get down, let's write um, let's write uh, the trailer out. What do we want? What what can we afford? Who can we get? So we're just like, all right, we need this and the other. We need somebody to do this. We need somebody to do that. Uh, we can do this. And we started writing scenes out, just constantly writing scenes out of what we could get. Um, then we're like, all right, who can we get? Who can we call? Who, who will be here for this? And then once we write all the scenes out, then we start being like, all right, who can we get? Who can be here on time? Who? What can we shoot? And we have to like dwindle down any scenes that we like just, just can't get at all. Right. Then you start uh, once we've done all that out. Once like once that's over with and we've written everything, then it's like all right, what's what's the name? So then we start pushing names between each other, me and Scotty. And then it was, I was like all right, I was like couldn't get enough, and he's like all right, that's cool. Write it like this though, like spelled out like this. I was like all right, that's cool. And then um, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday's calling everybody. Thursday's calling everybody, getting them to be like okay, we need to film Saturday, Sunday. These are the only days we have. This is what we need to do. Here's what we need to do in the house. We need a motorcycle, we need leather jackets, we need glasses, we need guns, we need a graveyard, we need dead bodies, we need a pregnant woman, we need uh, a baby, we need guys and glasses, um, this, that, and the other. Like, what can we do? Um, then it goes to uh, Friday, confirming everything. Uh, fr- yeah, Friday is buying everything. Friday buy- like going to the local Halloween store, Halloween place, party city, whatever the fuck. And uh, buying everything. We need. All right, we need fake blood. We need. Uh, we need. We need syringes to squirt it. We need uh, fake glasses. We need Vaseline for the reflective glasses. We need uh, fake mustaches for the bad guys. We need zombie makeup. We need uh, all kinds of shit. <clears throat> you know, just like what do we need down the list? All right. Then um, Saturday and Sunday is shooting. Hardcore shooting. So all we do all, that entire day is shoot. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday is editing. It's, fast as best you can make it as concise you, as you can once you w- once you've edited everything down to where it's um everything you need everything you want you use transition you uh you put you put color correction you put voiceover you put music you make it look like that era that that 1970s black exploitation or that uh, that like switchblade sisters kind of movie um and then, you know, you, you go from there, you get your crazy, crappy title sequence, you put in scratches and grain and bullshit, and, you know, you, you get your movie. Right. Now, is that for a contest, or...? It's, it's a contest held in Knoxville for the oh, Knoxville okay. Horror Film Festival every year. We haven't done it in the last two years because I haven't been there. Uh, it's called the Grindhouse, Grindhouse Grindout. It usually happens in September. Um, oh, okay. I love it. The guy who runs is William Afferty. Um, he's... Oh, God, I... I, I that's one thing we did for five years. We won we won the Dick Titty Award for five years in a row. Basically, what we would do is we would film uh, female friends that Scotty had uh, from the neck down naked. Nice. We'd have that file footage on hand, and then we'd start filming stuff for the you know that weekend for it and, and filling in you know like nudity as we went along. So we had like you know like three hours of nudity. We'd only use maybe ten minutes of it. Right. <laughs> So yeah, it was uh, it was a lot, it was always a lot of fun, always a lot of fun. Okay, yeah, because I've I've actually had some, I think it was on something you had said on somewhere on the podcast, and I have like half baked ideas running through my head of some kind of trailer esque. Now it's not horror based or things, but um, you know I got my editing and it was for the video editing. I started with iMovie before moving to Final Cut, and uh, you know there's those pre baked trailer type things that you can use where it's, you know, you put three seconds of video here and this here and this here. Um, but I, I think I would need to do the challenge now of actually creating one of my own where maybe I get stock music or whatever, but, uh, you know, the feel that I'm going for. So that's part of it was wondering how much of that stuff, you know, 
it sounds like you're writing full scenes so that whatever parts you use make sense. It's not just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, we're, 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 not, we're not really we're not really writing dialogue. We're just writing out scenes like okay, we need this, then we need this, then we need this. It's more, it's right. more of like a shot. It's more of like a shot list almost. Right. You know, it's more of like a shot list, and it's more of just like all right, what exactly do we need to tell the story in trailer form that will work? And actually, the voice you the voiceover you hear in that trailer is Scotty. Uh, that is Scotty doing a voiceover. Like we had the mic set up in, in you know in his bedroom, and he had aimed his mouth, and we recorded like two takes of it, and I used the best versions of it and put it put it in the trailer. The music we got from a friend of mine. I asked him real nice. He's like, "Hey man, can we get um, can you make us like some seventies like music for this trailer?" He made us a whole like three or four minute track. I was like, "Thank you so much." I, you know, give him you know give him a, a good thank you and everything, and it worked out. It worked out. That's good. All right. I have a question. What's up? Nick, what is your thought on Girl Scouts Samoan cookies? Um, <laughs> so really overrated. It's really underrated. And everybody should love them more than the Thin Mints. Because okay. you have cookie, you have chocolate, you have caramel, plus coconut on there. Why the fuck don't you like this? I don't know. They are they are really fucking good. And yeah. the second question I have is, are you familiar with that Kid Goes Beast Mode viral video? Uh, I am not. Well, it's in it's in the comments, but I was the the rumor is that is a nu- young Nick Udom. Is that true? Can you address those rumors right now? Hold on. No, because that video is way too new, and I was not that young that 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 short a time ago. But that kid does go pretty fucking hard, right? Yeah, but that is not me. And I, I did I, I did that's rugby as opposed to soccer. I played soccer as a young kid. That was that's not me at all. Well, that's a shame because that was the prevailing rumors that you were that kid. No, I am not that kid. <laughs> that's a shame. I know. I am oh. in no way that kid. I love. I love how the other kids are wearing helmets, and he's just like, "Fuck this! I don't. I don't wear helmets." Dude, that one stiff army gives this little fucking pip squeak and he just launches him. It's awesome. <laughs> link it, all, link in the description. Him. Yeah, he's twice the size, him, and, he's, and he's like, "Fuck you guys! I'm gonna run through you." Well, he looks Samoan, so that's why. Because I mean, you're Samoan, right? So why aren't you in the NFL or a professional wrestler? Since that is like the chosen profession of the uh, country. Because, because I, I don't want to get CTE. That's why. It's true, but I mean that 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 also could be a myth. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of scientific scientific data that, that goes against you know the, the myth um, thing. I mean, what so. is brain injuries? I mean, what are they? Are they real? I, I've been hitting the head a lot. Okay, I've had many concussions, and I'm fine. <laughs> uh, what is brain injury? You're supposed to repeat yourself. Yeah, what is a brain injury? I mean, <laughs> it's like what is drunk? Who knows? What do? <laughs> oh, hey. Any any other questions? Anybody? That's uh, it. That's all we got. Any. All right. If you there was one chick that you could bang right now, who would it be? Only one? Yeah. Oh man, Christina Hendricks. Damn, I was gonna go. With, I was gonna say your mom, but that's that's just funny. <laughs> be like that's what you're supposed to be like. Your mom. Be like, oh, okay, good one. Touche. No, no, no. I, I I'm quite drunk right now, and I had to really think. I was like, who do I want to put my dick into right now? Christina Hendricks. Yeah. She has a good choice. Billy Bob Thornton gets to simulate bang her in Bad Santa too. Really? Look. Yeah. <clears throat> Billy Bob Thornton, go fuck yourself. You're a you're a cock, goddammit. No, Billy Bob Thornton is a good American and he's a Cardinals fan, so did I you, like him. Did you not see the interview he did with 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 uh, about his fucking band where he acted like a total fucking ass? No, oh, I didn't because I don't care. Yeah, yeah, like he he was going in for his band. They asked him about the movie, and he's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? I want to talk about talk about my my band, not my movies." And he acted like he wasn't an actor, and never did anything. It was a shitty interview, and then like they canceled four of his uh, four of his fucking tours in uh, in Canada. Well, he's a weird dude. Well, oh, in Canada, there you go. Who cares about Canada? That's other true. than the well, fact, other than the fact that they have poutine, the Trailer Park Boys, and all dressed chips, nobody cares about them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Hortons. Hortons is nice. I like Hortons. Blame Hortons Canada. is good. <clears throat> I have no oh, I get the reference. What, Hortons? Tim Hortons? Of course you get the reference. It's a delicious donut store. No, I was talking about the South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut reference that Brian made. Damn, dude. 
Is that how you like them, bigger, longer, and on? Un- oh shit, I can't say that. To him. <laughs> <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, I was about to say, I was like, damn, dude, calm, calm shit. down. Yeah, Frank likes them bigger, longer, and uncut. There you go. Uh, I don't think so. There you go. There you go. There you go. I'll bring, back, Curtis. Bring it back, dude. Bring it back, slice. Excellent. Any any other questions? Any comments? Any quotations? Any any queries? I just have one question for the whole group. If a guy walked up to you and said, I just washed my genitalia, would you suck it, would you? No. No? No. No. Oh, so you guys are a bunch of dirty cocksuckers then. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't suck it at all. It's really what you're getting. Like, never. That's ne- not the question. You can't just try a dick and go back. You just... I mean, I mean, look at look look at Cuckles the Clown or Cuckles McNeese, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Cuckles the Clown. Okay, you know. fine. I got another question. Replacement Dustin. Does he is he an asshole and do you hate him? Uh, yes. yeah, hundred yes. percent. Good, because I do too. Fuck that guy. Like he's on he's he's on par with Phil right now, so it's it's it's, it's a toss up uh-huh. really. Is he gonna lose a foot too? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope they chop both of his feet off and hang him up upside down. And then, you know, do something to replacement Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I do have other questions, but these are more for uh, the, the uh, fan appreciation. Because, you know. That's a good thing, because... We could talk about that if we're done. If, if our interview with the Samoan is over, when we yeah, think anybody have any other any other questions at all, anything, anything at all? No. And you know that if nope. I think of something, I'll just send you a Twitter message anyway. True. It, it's not like we can't just talk to you at will. Yeah. So, <laughs> Nick, thank you for joining us tonight, Nick Udom. You've been a fantastic guest. You have a standing invite to be on the podcast anytime you'd like. Oh, uh, you guys give me give me an excuse to drink. Yep, Dude, I'm right there with you, pal. I'm thinking right. number five is on order at this point. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, so it well, sounds that's like it. it's we'll... a movie review time. Movie review. Oh, 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 oh yes. Ogs are up. Ogs are up. Yes. Oh. Yeah, talk well, about the emoji movie you went and saw today, Ogs. And get yeah. close to your mic, Ogs, so you don't cut out. It was a shit emoji. It was <laughs> the worst thing. I, I think it's the worst thing I've ever seen in theaters. Uh there's every sin of filmmaking in it, especially animated filmmaking, because the animation's horrible, the voice acting sucks, uh, it, just everything sucks, and any anything that would be slightly creative or original is just things that aren't original because have been already done in modern com- uh, animated movies. They rip off of Inside Out, Wreck-It Ralph, and the Lego movie. And it's essentially one giant ad. For it, what? For everything. They have a, a Just Dance app in it. They have Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter. They have like they fly on a Twitter bird to get somewhere. It, <laughs> Not it, an Angry nothing, Bird. No, they don't actually have Angry Birds. For well, that was one thing they didn't do. But um. They, it's just one big ad. They they jump from one thing to the other. Um, it's really dumb. It makes everything, makes everybody in the movie seem dumb. Like you know, coming from a teen himself makes every teen look dumb. Uh, it it just I. <sighs> I don't even want to talk about it. It just really sucked. It sounds like it emotionally scarred you. It did. It started with a good girl, so that was fine. Shit me on the doll where it touched you. It, it really <laughs> sucked. <laughs> <sighs> uh, draw, draw it on the doll. Yeah. So Nothing grab- made sense. It just... Oh, that, oh that, that's the worst where you're it, there for like an hour and a half and nothing fucking makes sense. Like, why am I here? Why, why, why are we in this theater? Why aren't you blowing me right now? The feminism agenda is, <laughs> prob- is absolutely horrible in it, too, because there's this one character 
basically the story of it is there's an emoji who's supposed to be meh and he's supposed to like they got to stay in their cubes or whatever which is like the freaking keypad and whenever they turn on the phone you gotta have this face and uh whenever they tap it it just like scans your face or whatever and it sends it as a text well the emoji just isn't a met hey somebody just called my name but, uh, <laughs> anyway, it just. Henry over there, and they're coming up about nine fifteen tomorrow morning for it. Oh, hey, Dad, I'm still on. Awesome. <laughs> I know. It's Father Oggs. <sighs> All right, back. It's Father for President. <laughs> hey, Dad. Are we on speaker? Hey. Well, that caught that. Okay. Boy, this is the best study group ever. I'm learning so much tonight. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Death <laughs> charges, folks. We have to dive. <laughs> I thought it was bad. My dogs were starting to um, almost wrestle. Oh, God. Yeah, the, the little one was doing something to the shepherd, and she kept growling, but it was real low. I bet. But, yeah. I think now would be a good time for it, uh, that any, nobody else has anything else to say just to kind of sign off. All right. <laughs> At least I'll stop recording. Okay. Is that is it? it? Are we done? I think so. Wait, no, 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 no. We we had our big, 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 uh, big, beautiful chest thing, right? Oh, boy. Can we do that? Yeah, is that the thing we're going to do or what? Yeah, first the depth charges are coming down. We got to dive. <laughs> I, 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 hear, I hear the alert. <laughs> okay, so the big beautiful chess nominee for this week is Jessica Negri. If you're unfamiliar, unfamiliar with this lady, she is a famous for cosplay. And uh, she is beautiful with a big, beautiful chest. The uh, link to the video that I shared with the group about why she should be in it will be in the description. Yeah, I already, I, I already like had a thing for her, and the fact that she did the Velma cosplay, like just like you know, I am God damn it, I'm so fucking hard right now. I could, I, I could bust through <laughs> four, four two by fours. I hated Velma as a child. I always thought Daphne was the hotter one because she had red hair. And fuck Fred, he's a fucking dork. No, I I've, I've, I've always been a Velma fan, even though she didn't have red hair. I was still like. That 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 really smart dorky girl can come blow me anytime. We'll see when this girl did the cosplay as Velma Dinkley. I suddenly started, you know, the the meter shifted. I was like, well, well Velma you, looked like that. Well, if you, if you have Instagram and you literally put in like in the search in the search thing hashtag Velma, you will be you will be very happy, sir. Hashtag Velma. All right, I'll have to take yeah, a look on, at that. Yeah, on, on Instagram, hashtag Velma, you, you'll you be very happy, trust me. It sounds like a post-show thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Kendo, I've, that... I've gone through, a, I found a bunch of pictures over so we can discuss what we want to do for the thumbnail, too. I don't really care, just have her on there. Actually, well, you could have her, I don't know, you could just have like a picture of a Samoan and just, <laughs> oh, you God. know. I don't know. I don't really care what you want to do. We'll have plenty of time to sit here and figure this out in the after show. But uh, anyway, so uh, the main show obviously is the inspiration for this. The guys at the flagship, Nick being part of that. That's World Class Bullshitters. You can find them on YouTube, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, iTunes. Uh, They've got a uh, page on Facebook that's great. Lots of interaction. There's an Instagram, a Twitter. Retweet to help spread the word. They're also on Patreon. And if you subscribe to Patreon and you donate on the Patreon, you can get really cool shit. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and you can buy t-shirts at incarnate-studios.com. Don't forget the fucking hyphen. Don't forget that goddamn motherfucking hyphen. <laughs> give, buy a goddamn t-shirt. Give them your fucking money. Did All I forget right. anything? And where can you email them at? Uh, worldclassbs at mail.com. The best mail. Dot com. Yeah, we're on we're all of our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just just some messages there, and we'll try to reply to you best we can. They're very good about getting back to you. Jeff is very good about getting back to you. Nick is in charge of most of the social media, and he's very good about getting back to you as well. 
<laughs> I told I you they were getting into it. That's the best endorsement we could get. All even, dogs agree. World even dogs love the show. The best. <laughs> 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 the timing on that was fucking impeccable. Yeah, that is amazing. Because I'm on headphones, so they can't hear you guys at all. But no. <laughs> Two paws weird. up. All right. It's not weird. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll end the show. I'll get them out, and we can talk stuff. All right. I have been your lovable host, ODB. Rain Muffin, along with Mr. Nick. And you yeah, I've been your last last ending drunk Samoan uh, saying uh, good night and get your pets spayed and neutered. <laughs> All right, guys, close us out. This is where you guys say I, good night. I've oh. been Ox for president. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is reality's Frank reminding you. At the end of the day, tacos are like emotions. <laughs> this is Kendo Slice. I don't even fucking care. This has been fun. <laughs> this is a good episode. I'm glad I could be on the fan cast. So thanks, guys. All right. Peace out. Girl Scout.